My dear's vlogs. I'm just um, pinning the link. I'm just trying to find um the link so I can pin it on um Lyndall's phone. Hold on for a second. Where are you from? We're from Australia. New South Wales, two and a half hours out of Sydney, north. I know what Dan's doing, this is not my stream, but I'm Dan's wife, Lyndall. How's it going? He said, hold this for a second. I'm just trying to um, find the link to um, pin it. Yeah, Jess is from India. Hi, India. JS blog from India. 420 Fred. Hey, mate. My 420 Fred. I don't really get my held this. I look like shit doll, oh, so, honestly. Say hello. Lovely fluff and stuff. Hey, fluff and stuff. Yeah, it would be freaking hot there. Surprised you're not bloody getting a bloody tsunami or cyclone or freaking whatever they call on it. Pretty hectic up that way. Nah, no rain here. It's sprinkling. Rain, no. It's like drizzle. Nothing, nothing bad. Nothing bad. Been hot though. Muggy. It's like 27 degrees, but it feels like 47 in the salon. You're dripping in wet sweat. It's gross. Sprinkled here for the first time in about a, I don't know, maybe what, three weeks? Uh, it's it's just dry here. Yeah, that's what we're been hoping for, and it cooled it down today. Cooled it down today, fluff and stuff. There was this beautiful breeze before the rain. It's not rain. It's like sprinkle. But it cooled, it dropped like 10 degrees. I was like, ah, oh, thank God. Yeah, it was bloody hot in the salon. Got fans going and it's only 20. It's not hot, hot, but it's like you got the hair dryers going, you got the straighteners going, you're running around like a headless chook and your body is dripping in sweat and you don't know why. It's disgusting. But this afternoon, this beautiful, fresh, beautiful, cool air came through. I was like, oh, my God, this is heaven. It was great. But it's not pouring rain. There's no lightning. There's no wind. It's just drizzle, 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 drizzle. And you ought to be bloody 38 degrees tomorrow. But it's comfortable. It's the first night we haven't had the air con on. No air con, just the windows open, the doors open, and it's ah, nice, fresh. How old am I? I'm 39 years old. GS vlog. 39. I 
probably look older. But I don't care. I got six kids and a business, so you know, get these wrinkles and shit and eye wrinkles and whatever. I don't care. <laughs> she all good. Doesn't matter. Yeah, all that fluff and stuff. Queensland is getting flogged. The poor buggers, like, <sighs> and, so um, bad. My sister got um, smashed to an arm. Helen's back. Yeah, he even Dan, sister that's like borderline New South Wales, uh, Queensland, Hel Helen's Vale. She got absolutely smashed with the weather, and has got bad. Um, yeah, bad damage and stuff to her house. And I'm like, she's not even in the epicenter of it. She was on the outskirts. So the epicenter or whatever is poor bugger. Poor bugger. It's like, it's cruel. What the fuck is happening in, in the weather? Not right. And I haven't copped it not once. It's just continuous copping it, which is, you know, you know, you have a flood and you have bad stuff. You think, you know, okay, it's time to recover now. Nah, then just keep copping it. It's like real sad. Not okay. There's something going on with it, eh? Anyway, I can't hold this phone anymore. Venom. He's Dan. Hey, Venom. How you going, brother? I love you. Dan's back on now. My lovely people. I just had to um try and work out and find the link so I could pin it. So if anyone wants to come up, you're more than free to. Hi, Venom, brother. Hi, lovely fluff and stuff. JS Vlogs. Julian. Juliana. Four twenty Fred. We'll try and get me and Linda Lenny. Yeah, I thought I'd go live, why not? What are you talking? Talking to all them beautiful people watching us. I was just on that ten minutes. They need to my tired old mum. Yeah, but they like seeing both of us. Venom said, oops, I forgot to um, say hello to chat also. Forgive me. You're forgiven, brother. You're a legend. You're a good person, Venom. Love you, buddy. Just going to um, quickly pass you to Linda. I'm just going to have a quick smoke. And then I'll what? come back in. I was yeah. just on there. You'll be right. God. We all know you and love you. You just talk to them and read the chat there. And so they can see your pretty face. My lovely Aria vlogs. My lovely Aria. Hope you had a wonderful um, Christmas, lovely. And New Year. Hello, oh, Aria. Ara. Aria. Aria. Didn't say Aria, it says yeah. Ara. But Aria. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Dan's calling you Aria, but your name says Ara. So oh. hi Ara. <laughs> Dan's not a very good reader. 
FYI. Well, Spella, Happy New Year. R R R R ah R R say you were wrong and I was wrong it's R R Hey Dan and Linda a few of us are watching 41 South No doubt when he finishes Ah oh. I'm sure Dan knows 41 South but um, sorry, 41 South, didn't know. 41 South is lovely, man. Yeah, Dan says 41 South's lovely and he loves him, so. But yes, RR. See, you were calling her Aria and an RR. Oh, I don't know. I it was no, no. It's RR. Thanks for coming and see us. Not doing too much. Just work today. Dan had a day of fixing washing machines and I had a day of dealing with a crazy client. <sighs> it was a bit, bit tough today. That's what com comes with customer service industry hairdressing in particular because you touch their hair they think they can I don't know they own you or something it's a very uh stressful industry at times very stressful but um got through it and tomorrow's a new day but I must admit, crazies come out this time of year. Random crazy people when you just look at them like, what? Like, what do you mean? And they want this weird shit. So weird. If someone has hair down to their bum and goes, can you cut this top bit like a bowl and then just have my long hair? And I'm like, no. Mm -mm. No, I can't do that. Like, but why not? Here's a photo. And I'm like, yeah, that's a Japanese photo. And if Japanese like their hair like that, maybe you should go to a Japanese hairdresser because I'm not cutting a bowl around your head and then you've got the length down to your waist no mm -mm. not doing that sorry disgusting no have you had a busy over the christmas festivities yes yes we have, but it hasn't been quite festive. I finished work on the 23rd. Dan and I finished work on the 23rd. We hid all six kids' Christmas presents at the salon, packed the whole car to the roof, the boots, the whole roof, went and done the seafood run and the last-minute grocery run. Last stop was the bottle to get the alcohol for Christmas. Just pulled in and some bloody 87-year-old crazy lady comes zooming round and press accelerator instead of brake and just smashed everything to smithereens in the drive through bottle including our car. And then two and a half, nearly three hours later, 
the copper just let us drive home and their car full to the brim. And then the insurance company wasn't open until the Wednesday, so we had no car because we weren't even meant to drive it. It was just this, yeah, it's festive, but, you know. But luckily, because we have all the kids in the family and there's no other kids, everyone comes to us, so we didn't have to drive anywhere, so that was cool. Yeah, it's like, welcome to your holiday. You have nine days off, but bang, you're going to spend nine days sorting your frigging transport out. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> but, uh, then we've got this frigging high car that's a bloody hybrid thing, electric thing, and you turn it on and there's nothing. There's no sound. And it's like, what do you mean? Like, is, is it even going? And then I'm like, we're well, going to crash this motherfucker, eh? Because <laughs> it doesn't even sound like it's on. Oh, hey, babe. Come on up. Are you good? Come up. My bestie's here, JJ, baby. My Jessica, beautiful Jessie, Jess, 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 Jess. She needs to come up. Love you, my girl. Yes, very full on fluff and stuff, definitely. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just spent nine days freaking doing. Sh we had plans. We we're gonna take the kids to the beach. We we're gonna take them here. That no, we stayed at home and pitched a tent in the backyard. Like fuck me. Went camping in the backyard. Went camping in the backyard like such bullshit, eh? No, it was fun, but well, they thought it was fun, but <laughs> I just thought this is sucks ass bad. Like more work. Okay, my bestie, love you. But yeah, not the best nine days off. That's for sure. At all. Yeah, it was a camp scene in the backyard, dog. It weren't, we didn't go nowhere. We it's... didn't have a car. <laughs> oh, man. It was still fun, but. No, yeah, well. What do you do? Yeah, Bob. Yeah, we had a pretty interesting holiday season. It was pretty good time off work, I think. Even let fire. off firecrackers New Year's Eve in a frying pan. And because all the firecrackers were joined as one um, thing, want to let them off, the bloody like going off the firecrackers jumped out the frying pan landed next to me feet and one hit me right um in me leg above me calf and went off and yeah i've got like a mark on me leg of a firecracker and then above it's when it went bang so you can see the whole firecracker and then where, where the fuse must have just went in and made it explode. Hi, lovely Sierra. Gia's vlog said, Dan, have you ever masturbate? <laughs> yeah, mate. You'd be lying if you any male said they didn't, being honest. But you don't need to because you have a uniqueness. But yeah, I don't need to because I've got a like wife and that, but yeah, definitely I've masturbated plenty of times. Yeah, it was a bit random of a question, but Mainly being honest. Mm. 
GS blog not appreciate. He's so disgusting. Lovely Jess said hi. Lovely Jess. Benham said, GS Vlogs, be nice and respectful. Lovely Fluff and Stuff said, oh my God, that's funny. I can't see the question. Hi, lovely Jess. Miss me, Mom. Linda was like, I miss you. I miss you. <laughs> I thought Zay can you say I miss you? <laughs> Love you, babe. Um, Jess said he likes to go around to chats being disgusting. And Venom said, I think they are connected to I mean, con connected to the two vlogs. We both love you too, lovely Jess. We have 18 beautiful people in here. Love you all. Thanks heaps for popping in and watching me and Lyndall. <laughs> yeah, poor Lyndall had a bit of a rough day at work today. Bit of a coincidence, but um, the washing machine at work shit itself, so I had to be Dan the handyman and I fixed the um, washing machine at work and then as soon as we got home um the wash machine here done the same thing shit itself as well and we're like oh what you're kidding and you had to so i had to fix the other washing machine at home but successfully i got the job done and i fixed them both But I just couldn't believe two wash machines going in the one day. That's yeah, a bit full on. Crazy stuff. Thanks heaps, lovely fluff and stuff. Lovely um, fluff and stuff said, "Oh, what? Go and buy a lottery ticket." <laughs> I've bought heaps, lovely, but. Yeah, sixteen dollars. Yeah, yeah. All as much as I've ever won. Like I spent like four hundred dollars on lottery tickets, heaps of times, and I only ever like win sixteen dollars back. So I'm sort of questioning myself now if I should even buy lottery tickets anymore. Nice how Aria Vlogs isn't commenting anymore after JS Vlogs appeared. appeared. Yeah, that's Hi, James. Mine's broken. Wanna wanna fix mine, Dan? Yeah, brother. If you were around here, mate, I'd fix your washing machine for nothing, buddy. Lovely Jess said, Dan the handyman. <laughs> yeah, it's good if you can fix something without spending money. Why not? We're the same. Lovely Fluffs um, said, we're the same. We're going broke to win Lotto. Yeah, it's a hard game to play, Lovely. Yeah, you I think yeah, you've, you've got like a one percent chance out of I think sixty four million, which is yeah, pretty crazy. You got more chance to be struck by lightning. Is the odds? Dan's a lovely lady when he drinks. 
You're a lovely man when you drink too, James. Say hi, James. Hi, James, you dickhead. <laughs> she doesn't mean it. She loves you, James. Well, I've had my fair share of smart asses today, and that's a smart ass comment. He's only joking around. James is cool. Oh, James is hilarious. Oh, you're so funny, James. You made me laugh. <laughs> no, he's cool, but. Don't worry, James. Lyndall's a bit full on at times. Oh. <laughs> Jess is laughing about it. <laughs> James is a dick. <laughs> No, he's not. <laughs> yeah, everyone's welcome up if you want to come up. Thought I'd go live for a couple of hours to see who's out and about and talk to you lovely people. Why not? Yeah, we've got a high car at the moment. And it's, yeah, a 2023 model Hydro, Hydro Bird um, Corolla. And when you start the car up, it's like it's just sitting there not even started. So you totally don't think the car's running at all. It's weird, but then. Just say if you um give it a little bit and then it goes like um half accelerate like the um rev limit goes halfway, then from halfway the engine kicks in, so then it'll start going brrrr, and then you hear like the engine sound crank in all of a sudden. And you stop the traffic lights and it goes down. It's weird, and then you when you stop, it's just like the car's turned off. Hi JD brother. Good to see you, mate. Legend JD, mate. Love you, buddy. Love everyone on here. Yeah, I would have come on um, your live stream the other morning, but I was on my way to work, brother. I definitely would have come on. Hi, random Aussie. G'day, Dan B. Could you please ask Lin Lindell why she backed into the lady in the bottle shop for? I wasn't even driving. How did I do that? <laughs> Lindell said oh, she wasn't even driving and I was. It was definitely me. I was driving, but I didn't back into the lady or not. I'm lucky I am. Um, Usually when we stop at the bottle, I would just jump straight out the car. And for some reason that day, I said to Linda, I stopped the car and I said, oh, are you going to go into um, the bottle -o, or do you want me to um, come in and help you carry the stuff out? And she's like, yeah, nah, come in and help me carry the stuff out. And then all of, the, all of a sudden, the old lady, yeah, ran up our bum, but if I just stop the car lock I normally would and jump out and go to the bottle o, I reckon the um old lady definitely would have run me over. Yeah, you would have been in hospital. Hi Duke. Good to see you, mate. Random Aussie said, G'day, Jess. James said, Today is Venom's birthday. Can you sing him a birthday? Happy birthday, Dan. I don't think it's his birthday today because 
I think you, you know, no, I think you got me to sing Venom's birthday. Yeah. Last week, I think it was, brother. JD said, hey, Jess, baby. And everyone's um, welcome to drop your links if you want. If you've got a channel, you're more than welcome to drop your links. Sharon's caring. And we all look after each other. It's the best way to be. And the legend JD's a um, member of my channel. And random Aussie. Thanks to lovely Sierra. Thank you again, lovely. Congrats, JD. Road to 600. Let's go. Yeah, that's mad, brother. I'm pretty sure you only need um 500 subscribers and 4,000 watched hours, brother, and then um you can get monetized. Well done, brother. Once you're monetized, JD, brother, I'll super chat you some cash, brother. Every time I see you live, buddy, I will. Duke said, except for Swanton. <laughs> Definitely. He can be nice, that bloke, but then other times he, yeah, I don't know. Lovely Jess said, Mick and I went live for a bit a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. We didn't see it, lovely. If we seen it, yeah, we must have been when we were asleep or was it in the day or at night? But we went live late and not many people are around at that time. Yeah, we're probably asleep, lovely. And when um, JD goes live, when I get up, I see him live, but I'm on my way to work. Drink slash alcohol does it to the best of us. Laugh out loud. Yeah, You're a good bloke, JD, mate. Love the it was 11 p.m. our time, so we would have been what's we been snoring. Yeah, we would have been in bed, lovely. Getting old. Jake said, Summer Nuts is doing a live stream tomorrow and all days on Facebook. I remember to go, um, going to the good old Summer Nuts. Um, I was 16, I only went there once, but. Geez, it was a mad time. And um, I told Lyndall this as well. I was standing on the side of the street. I was with um, three of my mates. And we're watching all these mad hotted up cars go past us on the main street. And um, one of my mates um, said, Bennett, if you um, grab this lady um, on a boobs when she goes past i'll give you a hundred bucks and because i was young and i was stupid i didn't think i'm like yeah all right so i went out and um grabbed this lady on a boob right and I, I shouldn't have and i i deserve what i got back then i truly did i was standing there right and i was wearing a um a hoodie a jumper but i didn't have the hood over my head anyway i've i've learned out and I was just focused on the lady's boobs, right? Because I really didn't see boobs like live. I've seen like pictures of boobs and that when I was younger, but I didn't. I've never seen boobs in person, in like in my face, right? So anyway, I'm like, 
yeah, all right, I'll grab this lady's boobs. But silly old me, right? I went and grabbed this lady's boobs as she's driving past in the car and I didn't look behind her because I was too focused on the lady's boobs. Anyway, there was this massive man sitting behind her in the car, a big bulky bloke, right? As the cars went past, I grabbed the lady on the boobs. Next minute, I have went flying over the guardrail, right? He's, this bloke, this huge man's grabbed me on the back of me um, hoodie, right? Oh, he's ripped me over the guardrail while the car's going. And I'm like, it happened yeah, It happened so quick, right? I, he's dragged me down the street. And before he let me go, this big bugger, King hit me right on top of the head. And then I um he let me go, right? And I rolled onto the side of the road. I got back up and I was dizzy. Anyway, I ended up going back to where my mates were standing. And um they started laughing, right? They like, oh, out of nowhere, did you see the bloke get um lifted over the guard rail and dragged down the street? He just got smashed in the head. And I said to me, mates, that was fucking me, you idiots. Like, you told me to grab the lady's boob, but I didn't realise there was a big bloke sitting behind her. And um, anyway, because um, I had a, a tent pitched, I'm like, oh, shit, I feel dizzy. I was, hey, I've got to go and I'll meet his back at the tent. So um, I ended up walking back to the tent and ended up like laying down and going to sleep. But after that, I thought I'm never ever going to grab another lady's boob <laughs> or anything. And here's this: the next day, I woke up. I asked me mate for the hundred bucks, and he's like, "Oh, I don't even have a hundred bucks. I was only joking you." I'm like, "Oh, what?" At the end of the day, when you're 16, you grab a lady's tit with the bulky bloke behind them. You're going to have brain damage. That's the result. I don't have brain damage now. <laughs> oh, she's saying I've got brain damage. <laughs> you would have got some sort of brain damage. I oh, know, to never grab a lady by her tits at all. <laughs> yeah, I did. I learned good that day. Definitely. <laughs> And that was like 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, no longer. 20. 39. Yeah, I'm 39 to 24 years ago. Yeah. Brain dead. 24 years ago. See, I'm not that brain dead. <laughs> Jess is laughing at you. <laughs> that ain't true. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty full on. And then we um after that the next day um because the whole purpose was to go down to um the summer nuts right watch all the burnouts and that and our main goal because we um caught a country link train down there and our main goal was to go and buy fireworks because up where we live you can't buy fireworks at all in um New South Wales so I um had five hundred bucks on me I. Because we're at Canberra, I filled up a whole suitcase of fireworks and I paid $500 for the firecrackers. Anyway, when it was time to come home, we um, jumped on the um, CountryLink train to come home and the bloody guards checked our bags and took all the fireworks off me. Yeah, I and I was... Spew and I, I just spent 500 bucks on firecrackers. Hi, Michelle. Thanks, lovely. Hope you've had a great Christmas and New Year. JD said, at 16, you can't wait now. I feel a right tit most of the time. So, same here, brother. Like, I always am um, in the bed. I don't know if it's the same with you, but I always um, sleep on the left side of the bed. So, Linda's on the right side. And 
yeah, I always, when I lean over my left side, using my right arm, it always goes on to Lyndall's boob. And then when I turn it left, I mean the right side, you get no one but yourself. Happy New Year, Sir Dan. Thanks, lovely. Happy New Year to you too. Lovely just said, oh, well, that sucks. You didn't catch a break on that trip. No, I definitely didn't. Oh, you haven't been back. Well, I yeah, I only went there one time in my life, some and that's it was a great time before I can't even drink. I got yeah, punched in the head and dragged down the road. But it was my own doing because I shouldn't have um listened to me stupid mate taking me on. Pressure is a thing. Yeah, and back then like when I was younger, I don't know, like I was a bit of a show off. Like I I had no fear about anything. And if anyone told me to do something, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't, if they dared me, I wouldn't think twice. I'd just go and do it. Like I remember um, another time I went to the beach because I used to um, surf heaps. And this time I went to the beach, it was dead set like 15 foot waves, like big waves, right? I think it was like a six metre swell. Anyway, there was heaps of people standing at the point near the, um, these rocks. And um, I know them all right, but they were standing like way back. And at the point of there, there's like a big cliff. And usually when it's not that like high and it's like normal waves people jump off the cliff into the ocean and then there's a lot you climb up the rock face to get back up but anyway um i went to the beach and there was so many like, i think there was about 50 people standing at the point and then when i went there there was about 10 people i knew and they're all like bennett i dare you to um jump off the rocks and i looked and went oh the the waves are huge, do you know what I mean? You'd be crazy to um even think about even doing that. Anyway, um I said, All right, I'll I'll do it if um someone else um does it with me. Anyway, one of my mates like, All right, um I'll we'll I'll jump with you. We'll jump at the same time, right? So we'll go there and wait for a bit of a break in the waves. And um, we'll stand near each, near each other and we'll count the three and then we'll both jump. So I'm like, all right, yeah, no, nah, that's fair. I walked out with um, one of my mates, Rob, right? everyone's still watching. Next minute, me and him are standing there before this massive wave comes, right? He's like, one, two, three, I fucking, three, because he said three, jump. I fucking jump, right? In the mid air, I sort of turned my head and he's still standing up on the cliff. And I thought, yeah. you bloody asshole! I've hit the water, right? Next minute, um, the the uh, water sucked out this channel and dead set. My whole belly was on the bloody rocks, right? Like I was like a stuck penguin on the rocks. Next minute, I sort of put my head against the rock, right, and held it. I don't know how I didn't get smashed up against the rocks, right? This big wave come. Anyway, I've managed to swim in against like the cliff face as I started um climbing halfway up the cliff. Everyone's yelling right that I could hear in the background. And the dude that was meant to jump in like with me, he's um ran before the actual wave hit because he could see where I couldn't because where I was climbing up the cliff, it sort of blocked the view from looking out towards the ocean. Anyway, he's quickly ran up and gone, jump back in the water, Bennett, and start swimming. He goes, there's this monster wave coming. He goes, you're going to bloody die. Anyway, I was too afraid to jump back in the water, but where I was standing, hanging on the cliff, 
it sort of went into a cove like this, oh, like that. And I've ducked inside this cove, right, and held onto this rock, this massive wave, like huge wave. I think it might have been like 20 foot. Come over, and then um, everyone's like watching in the background. They fully thought that I got swept out and I was dead. I think I held my breath for about a minute before the wave went over and sucked back out, dry, dry to nothing, and I was still hanging halfway up this cliff. Then once the yeah wave like went out and drained out, then I ended up climbing back out. And oh, like being honest, out of everything that I've done in that moment of time, I I was that scared like. Crazy. I've never been that scared in my lifetime. James, brother. James, oi, oi, how's it going, my brother? How are you going, buddy? I'm doing pretty good, man. Good to see you, buddy. Hi, Chalupa. Good to see your lovely face, too, man. You too, brother. You're a good person, mate. Hi, so PDX. So How did you, you end up making to the tent that day, man? See that, James? Hi, James. James, cool. Good day, good day. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> See, it's morning because James is in um, Canada. Mm. Yeah, James in Canada. That's rough. You've been up all night. Is it, is it snowing in Canada at the moment, brother? Oh, my mic's low. Is it snowing in Canada at the moment? Yeah, there's a little bit of snow, man. Not much. Yeah, let me turn my mic down. Everyone's welcome to come up. JD, you can come up. Venom, lovely Jess. 420 oh, yeah. Fred. We don't want Venom on cam, man. He's going to start dancing. Yeah, Venom's awesome. He's awesome just like all you lovely people. How's my mic now, Jess? A little better? Yeah, good now, brother. <coughs> PDX Metal said, good to see you, Dan Bennett. You too, mate. Good to see you too, matey. I'm just, I'll quickly put you on the Linda. I'm just going to quickly go do a, do a PLM and have a quick smoke. Very naughty. You'll be cool. You'll be right. Smoking is very naughty. Lovely Jess said, better now, James. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hold yeah, it. Right. Let's chuck the phone across the room. Um, hi. Howdy ho. Um, so how was your New Year's? Pretty good? Not really. We didn't have a car. And then we've got six kids. And then we couldn't really do much, and then we had all this shit going on. So we pitched a tent in the backyard and had a bonfire and crackers and sparklers and, you know, those, those loud fucking whistle things. The kids thought it was, like, good, but I was like, this sucks, really. Yeah, so, yeah. In a nine-year-old and below's brain, it was okay. Oh, cool. In the parents' eyes, it was like, can I just go to bed yet? <coughs> Happy New Year. That was fun. You know, shit happens. Doesn't even matter. Because you know what? 2024 now. 2024. Yep. Although I had a bad day today. Ooh. 
I know Dan broke your washing machine, you would say? Dan broke your uh, washing machine. Huh? I said Dan broke your washing machine, you would say? No, we just had a really bad day. Too many loads. The washing machine gets flogged out with that many towels and capes for a hair salon. It's disgusting. And if you can imagine how much hair is in a hair salon on capes and towels, it's like a beaver stuck in the plug, honestly. Like, bad. Like, yeah. I don't, like, why would I go, oh, I've got 10 minutes. I'm going to go clean the plug to the fucking washing machine. No, I'm going to go get a drink and something to eat. I'm not going to clean the plug to the fucking washing machine. Hell no, in hell. So just, you know, years and years of fucking plugness. That's what happens. So, you know, what do you do? Get Dan to pull the shit out and there's a dirty fucking, yeah, I don't want to know what happened there. But he fixed that it. it's working fine now. <laughs> Fancy that. Go Dan the plumber. Handyman, sorry. Dan the handyman. James didn't like talking to me. <laughs> well, I'm only interesting to certain people. Hey, Corey. Find comment. I don't know. Oh, you hit the wrong button. Eh, that's cool. I don't know. I'm not pressing no buttons because I'll get in trouble. That, that's a Dan thing. That's a Dan thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And they just click on there. And see where it says um guess there. If if no, that's, I don't want to learn. But if that says one, that means someone's backstage. I don't want to learn that. Oh, Thank you. Won't be able. Good. <laughs> Sorry. Not a big YouTuber. I'm a fill in. Oh, good bestie, you don't even worry about it. Yeah, she won't come up to the kids are in bed. Freaking stuff that till they're in bed. Ew. <laughs> oh, well, you say that to Mick then, will ya? Fucking hell. Smart ass. Uh, I don't know. I don't have any stories. Actually, I fucking do. Something grossed me out. Am I allowed to talk about the Madden situation on YouTube or no? Yeah, it was funny. Oh, my God. It was funny because um, you're uh, coming out even. Yeah, I know it's weird. Um, the first time that you've ever caught that, really. Well, tell them the last week, Madden won the Suns game and they and they and they and they and they and they and No, I'm not going to say that. I'll just say there's a long, long story of what happened at work today, which was dramatic. And then Dan had a long, long day of washing machines today. And then... Spend a bit of time with the kids, gave them dinner, gave them a bath, put them to bed. My seven-year-old, oh, I gotta do a poo, gotta do a poo. 
Like how I'll go to do a poo, comes out, so serious. It's the first time it's ever happened to me and I'm like, like I went out, told Dan and I like dry reached and threw up in my throat. He's like, mum. And I'm like, yeah, babe. He's like, I just checked my poo. I'm like, ew, but like, why? He's like, there's white wiggly worms in my poo. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, no, I'm not. There's like these wiggly, what? I'm like, oh, my God. My fucking son, seven-year-old, has worms in his butthole. What the fuck? I'm going to the chemist. Like, I, I'm going to the chemist. Like, what the fuck is that? And we just bought chickens for Christmas, and I'm like, he's got worms off the chickens for sure or something. And I immediately went to the five-year-old and the nine-year-old, have you got wiggly worms in your poo? <laughs> They're like, no. I don't have any wiggly worms in my poo. Patton's like, I do. I'm like, <laughs> went and told Dan, I'm like, oh, fucking hell, chemist trip tomorrow, brother. <laughs> yeah, so that was gross. Anyway, this shit happens, okay? It's real. It was funny, but I wish I got it on camera, like Lyndall's face. If you come out, Run we're it. thinking that she's won the lottery or something, just like so, like the information she needed to tell us was that important, like, was, do you know what I mean? But then she's like, when we listen, she's like, well, like, what's going on? She goes, man just come out of the toilet. And said, um, he wanted me to look at his poo, but I said, no, that's disgusting. And she said, why? Well, he goes, I've got um little white worms wiggling around in me poo. <laughs> that's fucking dirty. And I was wondering, because the kids, they all eat a lot, but he was eating way too much, like probably double what the other kids are eating. We're like. What's going on here? He's must must be um growing. Growth must be having a big growth spurt. But now we know. Last week, he's bloody had worms in his poo. Yuck! Oh, Vermox tomorrow. So tomorrow we're gonna have to go to the chemist. Worm every person that's ever been near us. And Wormy's bum bum. And everyone else's. Hi, Corey. Well, Curry. Hi, Curry. Lovely, Jess said they come from bacteria on dirt hands, from what I understand. My mum went through it with my brother. As a kid, mm. yeah, it's My crazy. Mom's had it cutting animals and cleaning dirt without washing hands. And we them. always get them to wash their hands in the bathroom and whenever they sanitizer. go to the toilet. And then we've got like a massive bottle of um sanitizer, and yeah, they always sanitize. But yeah, I don't know. You would have skipped one time. Crazy. But I suppose um it's a part of life that everyone goes through at times. Yeah. It is disgusting, but I just wish it was filmed how it went down and how it was said from him. And yeah, it, it was funny. We went a soap opera. My face. You all would have been cracking up laughing. But at least our children tell us things. Lovely Jeff said, part of parenting, you never know what the day will bring. Definitely not. Crazy. At least the kids would come to us with personal stuff like that. Venom said, change the diet is more likely. Just saying. 
Yeah, they um, they eat anything and everything, brother. Being honest, they eat oysters, everything and anything. Fucking hell. Anything they'll just eat. If they don't like it, they hold their nose and sweat it. They have a good diet. They eat lots of... And we've got, like, heaps of different fruits and all that out in the backyard. We don't know if they've eaten the wrong bit of fruit or... Off the tree. Or... Off the tree or patting the chickens or... Yeah, we kiss don't know. Kiss the dog. They kiss oh, yeah, dogs. they give the dog a good old kiss. Everyone's welcome to drop your links, guys. If you've got a link or a channel, feel free to do so. Where did um, ja where'd James go? I think he pressed the wrong button. I think he just didn't like me. Where'd you go, James? Sorry, Matt, I had to go and have a smoke. Hit the wrong button. Come up if you want, JD, brother. And Venom, more than welcome to. Or if you don't want to come up, you at least um, drop your links in the chat. That'd be cool. Some people don't like me. Some people love me and some people just get me, scare me. What do you call James again? Venom said, Asa, crime by error. Crime book, yeah. Oh, crime book, sorry. Come up if you want, Miko, if you're watching, brother. Everyone's welcome to join if you want it. If not, you're all welcome to have a talk in the chat. I don't mind. Either way, it's good talking to all you beautiful people. Or it's boring. Oh, it's not boring. Lennon thinks it's boring, but it's not boring. 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 <laughs> I bet you if um, Jess jumped up now, you'd go, yee! It's not boring anymore. No, because she can get a face on here and I'll talk to her. Anyone else gets their face on there, I'll talk to them. I'm a hairdresser. I don't text. I hate texting. I hate text, chat. Nah. That's a lot of energy. It's all good, guys. I don't mind if you text and chat. Yeah. Don't worry about Lyndall. <laughs> this is cup of tea. James said, I think I might go back to bed. Only had three hours of sleep. What time is it where you are now, James? In Canada. And if you only had three hours of sleep, brother, you at least need eight, eight hours of sleep a day. Thanks heaps, um, P PDX. Don't forget to hit the like button for Dan. Thank you. Venom said, personal interactions are always the best. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And 
What is your wife? Pardon? What is your wife? Who? Me. I'm a hairdresser yeah. and what do I do all day? I don't do text message. I don't do all that. It's one-on-one -on -one to your face connection. That's it. I don't do this. This. I do, hi, how you going? Do you want to chat? Yeah, okay, let's do your hair and we'll chat. Taste of venom has me, he knows. He knows. You're calling me, don't worry about Lyndall, but that's who I am because that's what I do. Well, no, we only need to. Later. Doesn't mean it's bad. It's not bad. I just like talking to actual people, not words on a screen. Words on a screen is like you're boring. Yeah, but not not to us in the chat. To you. It's awesome. Venom said Lyndall knows. Yeah. See Venom? <laughs> I know that you know you know and I know what yeah, he don't know. He just you know. We know. Love you, Venom. We know too, Venom. Love you, pal. It's almost 6.30 in the morning. Yeah, you should get a couple more hours sleep, brother, definitely. Because if you only had three hours, well, yeah, three hours sleep, that's not enough, mate. Brain work, work. You should um, drop your link, James, brother. Have you um got a channel PDX? Hi oh, Mark. Good to see you, brother. Cheers, mate. Hey. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello, my love. Hey, Mick, brother. Hello. Where's your Mick? He's watching Hi. the cricket. Hi, lovely, Dan. Hello, Dan. I'll put you on to my um, bestie. Because <laughs> she's been hanging the talk to you. Hello, beautiful lady. Hello, darling. How are you? Good. I'm all right. Had a, what you having a, had a pretty good or... day. You did? Yeah, it was all right. We uh, yeah, took the kids over, over to Billabong, the animal sanctuary. Oh, that's cool. We didn't have that shit, Randy. Well, oh, it's expensive as fuck, though. Holy shit. How much? Four people, $148. Oh, man. What? Exactly. I'm just, I like, I, because, like, zoos in Canada, like, the zoo in Canada where I live, like, the Toronto Zoo, um, I used to think it was expensive, but compared to the prices here, like, it, it's really not. Mind you, we can't feed kangaroos there, but... It was, it was, yeah, it was a lot. And then today was like really, really hot. And the sun was just blaring. It was not in the least bit forgiving today. And just walking around all day. We left the house early and. You did look a bit pink. Yeah, I am. I feel it more on my neck than anything. But like. Because I had my big sun hat on. Like I have this giant sun hat that I wear. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Kate Winslet. <laughs> Fucking no. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've got this big sun hat and like I was all right for my face, but like just pouring sweat into my eyes and like 
everyone's walking around, even the people that work there who are used to it, like they're just pouring sweat. Like it was, it was, it was not a forgiving day to go out all day. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then the kids start whinging, oh, we're hot. Like they love being there. Like my daughter, she does not want to leave the mm -hmm. kangaroo enclosure. She's obsessed with yeah. them. She talks to them. She hugs them. Always the daughter. They oh. make friends with every animal they meet. That's my yeah. friend. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 my youngest. And she just we had gone to the kangaroo enclosure once and she got to pat them and feed them and hug them. And then on their way out, she's like, can we go back in there? Uh, time. Uh, well, because the first more, time, one more, one more. Yeah. The first time we went through, there was a lot of kids in there and she's like, Oh, all the other kids were in the way. And I couldn't, I couldn't spend time with the kangaroos. So can we go back in there? Because uh, there was a couple of shows running while we were um, on our way out. Because we this is the second time we've been there. We Like the first time we took them, it was amazing. We got to see the croc show where they feed the crocs and everything. Yeah. Um, but the last time we went, it, um, it, it wasn't as busy. Like right now because of the holidays and kids right. being off school. Like yeah. it mm. was just packed mm -hmm. full of running screaming children uh, and yeah so it was like once you've no. seen one croc show you've pretty much seen them all so then after we were there for a couple of hours we're like oh let's just get out of here like it's just it's too hot and my little one she knew that there was a pool there and she, mom can we go swimming can we go swimming it's like i can take you swimming any day for free down at the strand i'm not gonna spend all day in the pool here like it's too hot she goes oh, okay okay yeah so we got to see the new um meerkat exhibit they're oh, so they're cute. cute they're so cute you want one eh? oh my god they're one. so cute <laughs> i have one as a pet for sure i would i would take one definitely yeah I they were really one. cute Did you take one i want to i wanted to put it in my pocket yeah yeah they're cute Definitely. Me cats are awesome. Oh, they were so adorable. And then they kept doing these like little cute things, just, you know, looking up for birds of prey and trying to jump out of the enclosure and trying to climb and things. And they, oh. like this. they stand up and their little feet go. Yeah, like they that. stand up and they put their little oh. noses in the air. Oh, my it's goodness. Cute. Yeah, they're so cute. Um, we hadn't seen them yet. This was the first time we had seen them. They didn't. They weren't there the last That's time we cool. went. So it was. It was really nice. Like we did enjoy it, but it's exactly. just like walking around in the blaring heat for four hours. It's just like I want to go no. home and take a nap. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. And for you guys out there. That simple task of taking your children somewhere for the day is not a simple task. It's, it's not. It's draining huge effort from parents. Okay? It is. Yeah. Is it not? It is. It's it is. Like you have to it push is. yourself to do that and you get little tiny snippets of joy, <laughs> right, through the day but not much. Like you don't get out of it what you put into it not one bit yeah and you then, gotta pack a bag and water <laughs> and extra clothes and snacks by the time kids have got 80 percent enjoyment out of it and then you bring them home they're assholes and then that snippet of enjoyment just disintegrates into why did i even fucking do that yeah that's what happens in my house Honestly, yeah, actually, make, my house. It, it's the same way. It's like we we're getting ready to go, and the kids are like, "Oh, okay," and I, and I'm just like to try to get them to not want to stay in the pool all day. I was like, "Okay, why don't we go to Macca's, get you guys some lunch, a late lunch, and we'll we'll get you guys some like you know some frozen drinks, and you guys can yeah, cool off frozen, in the youth. Yeah, frozen. Yeah, they're all like, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, and they're like, okay, yeah. They were convinced, right? But then you have to walk through the souvenir shop to leave. Yeah. 
then you fuck. And then all of a sudden, it's like the whole day that you spent with them, the money you've spent to get in there, it's like, okay, well, let's drop some more money. So on our way out, we got another $50 worth of friggin' stuffies and plushies that they clearly don't need, but they wanted. I know. And then it's going to go in their bedroom. They're going to be interested for about five minutes in that stuff. So it's going to go in the toy box and collect dust for the next three years. <laughs> yeah. Three years before you go, I'm chucking this out. Well, yeah. Right. Well, they, they, the first time we went, they, they both chose, um, crocodile stuffies because they'd never seen crocodiles. They loved the show, feeding the crocs. It was great. This time around, we got up and close and personal with an emu. My son wanted an emu toy. And then Kalina fell in love with the meerkat. So she wanted a meerkat toy. And it's like, oh, you little fuckers. Like, can't you just accept the fact that mom and dad spent enough to bring you here? Like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, exactly. Then I, no, doesn't compute. My kids do have this crazy obsession with stuffies. They love them so much. Two they out of my them. three do that. Two, I can understand that because two out of my three do that because if they're stuffy Pokemon weird fluffy his name is when my seven round goes missing fucking hell breaks loose motherfucker I like seriously fucking hell and do you know what mum's little baby sausage dog is obsessed with these fucking Pokemon stuff toy and yeah. steals it all the time which makes it even worse because the fucking mum lets the dog in and it goes straight for the fucking Pokemon <laughs> and I'm like, I get home from work and I'm like, oh, I don't know where your fucking Pokemon is. Where is it? I don't know, but I'm not going to bed. Is it? Next minute I find it under the dog's temporary inside bed because mum's dog has like three beds. It's an inside temporary bed, outside afternoon bed, and then her bed when she goes to bed with mum. She's got three fucking beds. It's un she's Literally hitting it, hitting it, hitting this Pokemon under the friggin' temporary bed, like <laughs> honestly, to piss my son off. I feel that's what she does. Like, honestly, it's like I understand the connection between the stuffies, definitely. Yeah, my kids, they have a serious obsession with them ever since they were little. But the things they cannot do without in this world is the baby blankets that they've had since they were born. They cannot survive without them. They cannot. They must have them all the time. Stuffies, like they like having them around. But those blankets, it's like if they don't have it, that's it. Like it, the world has come to an end. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. But yeah, we, we got exposed to a lot of craziness. Like you look at a group of kids and they're just running around like wild savages. Like this one woman had a, like 11 kids and we're like, holy crap. And it's like, you know, you're supposed to take turns while you're doing things with these animals and these kids just run in and rush these kangaroos. And Kalina just looks at me with these big eyes. She's like, Mommy, all the kids are in my way. It's like, all right, well, just relax, you know. You'll get your turn. And she got to pat a few, but then that's why she was, like, on her way out. She's like, Mom, the kids aren't here. Can I go back now? Yeah. It's cruel. Yeah. So that's it's, what it's, you can do those things on school holidays. School holidays are for vacation care. <laughs> I don't do <laughs> school holiday stuff. I just put them in vacation care and the vacation care teachers take them to that shit because I don't want to deal with that at all. But there's a two-week leeway, right? And I spent nine days straight with the kids with no car, but it was fine. This week, they have spent Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So, so no, when we get back to work, we're back like Tuesday. Yeah, so Tuesday, Wednesday, three days with mum at home in each other's faces. They're blowing. They're blowing. Like, 
oh my god like fighting like they don't want to see each other's face again you know <laughs> I don't see your face again bring back bring back the bit like they're fucking like crazy and i'm like mom come on you can do it <laughs> i've got tomorrow to go and dan have them on sunday like and then vacation care but what, like literally a week with the children in each other's faces not doing activities is fucking dangerous these days <laughs> like, i'm not joking like even havana she's five turns around and goes i wish madam was dead and i'm like excuse me you take that back and go say sorry to your brother and give him a cuddle <laughs> and like, okay. like what the fuck that's not a normal comment like that just, that comment doesn't happen you know what i mean like it's, it's, yeah school holidays is like not okay in australia it's not okay in norway i had a client come back from norway in school holidays they have four months off for vacation after school but do you know what they have free camp, free childcare for any child under the age, over the age of six months old. For oh, any wow. working parents, it's all free, and it's all community and all. It's like they have the, I don't know. The, she showed me this slogan. It said, um, "It takes a takes a tribe to bring up a family." I don't know. It was like some like it's not just up to the parents like it takes a community to bring up the next generation of children yeah i like, heard that i've watched a documentary on it can i live in norway <laughs> honestly like come on like america or canada is nowhere like that no, but not even in close Australia, if you need help you could pay the cash robo yeah, no, it's the same thing in Canada. We have to pay for everything over there. Yeah, you just got to pay. Money, money, money. Yeah. That's it. It's hectic. It's bullshit. But yeah. you have no choice, really, because you can't just flog your mother who can't do it for seven weeks straight, <laughs> can you? <laughs> you can't do that. That's cruel. I remember because my my mom uh, and I like I lived in the country. My mom lived in the city. We were like forty minutes apart, so it was very rare that my mom would come up and watch the children. Like, if I really needed her to, she would. Like, because my oldest, right? He he's almost twenty. Like, he would watch the littles if I really needed him to. Um, but then there was this time where I took him to a, a baseball game, and I didn't have anyone but my mother. And um, we had to leave early in the morning. So it was like a whole day thing. Like we left really early in the morning, we came home really late at night because there's a train that takes you to the city. Um, and she's like, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. I can handle it. I can handle it. And it's like halfway through the day, she's calling me. She's like, oh, my God, why do they fight so much? What's going on? And I'm just like, what are you talking about? She's like, well, she was hitting him and he took this this from her and there was fights. And she's like, I can't. I'm too old for this. I could do it when you guys were kids, but I can't now. I'm too old for this. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a thing. Like, honestly, you did your time. You did your time of that shit. Like, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're supposed to only be like a, a short visit now not like a, a babysitting thing because they just lose their minds they don't have the patience yeah. they used oh, to before. like my dad has got it down packed because he will have the kids for one maximum two nights sleepover in school holidays only he does <laughs> not do any school pickup he does not do anything apart from that and do you know what? My kids want to go to his house all the time, but they're not allowed. Yeah. Because the only the reason they want to go there is because so they're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> and they want to swim in his pool. Do you know what I mean? But my dad is like very, 
no, no, I'll have you in the school holidays and the maximum he ever has on is two nights, that's it. Yeah. He's done. He's done two nights of seven-week school holidays, two nights, and he's done his thing for the the tribe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Just, that's it. That's all you're getting from me. Because he's, <laughs> like, he's, he's a baby boomer. So I don't know if you know the whole story about baby boomers. They're very yeah. um, self-centred and they want what they didn't get as children and they just do what the fuck they want to do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And my yeah. dad does do whatever the fuck he wants to do. And I have to fit his grandchildren into his schedule, whereas that's yeah. not how it used to be. Do you know what I mean? Back in the day, it used to be like his mother used to babysit me and my brother for like a week straight because he was still at work in school holidays. We just get bobbed off to his mum and his dad. Yeah. And he had the freedom to work with no children, no dinners, no breakfast. He didn't have to do that. Yeah. But he don't care about that because he's a baby boomer and he goes, nah, not, not doing that. I'm going to do what I want to do. For my mom, she would rather, like, she'd rather, like, come to my house, right, during the holidays and stay for a few days with me, not having to babysit, just stay with me. So that way, like, I'm still in charge, I'm still doing everything, but they get to have grandma time, and she's the best, and everybody wants to, grandma to sleep in their room, and they all want grandma like with you're her. you're still the uh, discipline. You're still the in charge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because then, like, you know, if they get rowdy and because they'll even have fights over whose room grandma's going to sleep in. So they have to take shifts. Like one night grandma sleeps in, in her room and then he, she sleeps in his. Like, it, it's nonstop. Like, and my, my grandmother, my mom, sorry, my mom would, would just be like, oh, my God, can you just pick which room I'm sleeping in so I don't hear them fighting anymore? I don't want them to fight. It's like, what do you mean? Me and my brother used to fight all the time. You used to take care of it. She's like... No, no, no. I don't have the patience anymore. I can't do it. I can't. I'm the nice one. I'm the grandma. I spoil them. You, yeah, you're, the, you're the one. I just give them whatever it is. That's <laughs> you... what my mom does. She's like, no, I don't do that anymore. I just give them whatever it takes to shut them up. And I'm like, but mom, I've seen empty frozen Coke drink containers in the bin. And they don't drink Coke, Mum, because they're fucking psycho. Did they go psycho? She goes, mm, no comment. Yeah. I said, how long that shut them up for? She goes, about an hour and a half. I'm going to buy you a frozen Coke. Yeah, my mum is the kind of person who shows up with, like, 10 different kinds of lollies in her bag. And then she yeah. has to like secretly give them to, to the kids because she knows my rule. And yeah. she'll come saying. over with a my bag full of lollies. Coke. Yeah. But. And it's just like, mom, no, can you just limit their sugar, please? Like, my kids have never had Coca Cola. They've never had caffeine. They've never had any of that stuff. And my mom would just be like, oh, it's okay. It's not going to kill them. Look at you. You're fine. Like, that's not the point. The point is, is you give them that shit and then you go back home and you leave me to deal with the savages yeah. who are just running rampant. Yeah. Fucking out. That's what's happened to me for three days straight. Madden is seven and he's the kid that I took them all out of primary school to put in a private school because of him because he's so sensitive for the three days that mum has had them at dinner time he has been bawling his eyes out crying so emotional over nothing like what plate he's got and he's so not regulated 
And I'm just like, are you fucking serious, Madden? Like, what has happened today? Oh, we drank Coke and this and that. And then he's like, I've got worms in my poo and this. Like, I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? I got up early and no one was awake, so I couldn't go back to sleep. And his brain is exploded. <laughs> And he's seven. Yeah, he took his brother's computer at seven o'clock in the morning as well and hacked his password. I don't know, some shit, but the seven-year-old hacked the nine-year-old's computer so he can get on it. I don't know how, but whatever. <laughs> I don't know, these bloody kids. How do you yeah. That shit. My kids teach me how to do sh stuff on on uh, on like things that I, I never thought that they were going to teach me. Like I, I thought, here I'm I'm actually I'm I'm progressive. Like I know how to work computers and I, I know how to, for the most part, do things right. And then it's like these kids come up to me and they'll just be like, "Oh, did you know you could do this and this and this?" And it's like, seriously, how do you know all that? You know, and oh yeah, we watch YouTube videos. They teach us how to do it. It's like, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. My nine year old will sing a song and I'm like, where the hell do you know that song from? And you're like, oh, it's just YouTube, Mum. Like, I'm just gonna um set it up for Lyndall so she doesn't have to hold the phone. Yeah. We'll just set it up for her lovely so she can just sit and have a drink. What are you doing? This is your channel, doll. I don't know what it's called. I'm out there having a drink, talking in the chat. Hiya, bro. It's awesome. Hiya. Yeah. Look at that. I'm pissed. I need a drink, FY. Yeah, I'm fill you up, buttercup. Fill you up, buttercup. Mm, good bed. All good. Hands free. I'm going to be good at Baha. <laughs> Leave now your hands free, right? You just don't touch that cord, otherwise you stop charging. Or get your drink. See? Hands free now. Sorry I interrupted your conversation. Keep going. Yeah, right. Daniel it's your channel, Dan. What do you mean? Relax. <laughs> cool, lovely. I, I don't mind. It's all good. She's all cool. You have a good old chat. I don't mind. I'm something different. I don't mind sitting in the background and talking to all the lovely chatting in the chat with all the lovely people while you have a cool conversation. Is Mick even on there? Mick's watching cricket. Ah, fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's been cricket, 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 cricket. And today we're in the heat. We're listening to cricket, cricket here, cricket mm -hmm. everywhere. It's cricket, 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 cricket. I'd fucking do this late. They're, those commentators, literally, they have them voices that, you know, <laughs> like, they're, like, uh, what are they? To me, cricket commentators are like hypnosis, <laughs> hypnosis that put you to sleep, like, you know. Oh, because, yeah, it's very monotone. But see, for how me, they monotone, they monotone their... Boy. Like I like, I like cricket, but these four day matches where it's like, holy shit! It's like, why, why, why would it need to take four days? Why? I just go, what the fuck? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I, really I do, like. I do, I do enjoy my cricket, but like, yeah, it's like, good. but you know what? I like them 2020 matches. Maybe. That's what I was about to say. That's what I like. I like the 2020. Like this is this four day shenanigans, and and then it has to stop on rain, and like get the fuck out of here. Oh fuck! That's just... Oh my god, that's too long. Like, it is too to long. Be an end to the shit. Like why? No, can't do it. Can't do it. 
I can do a one day or a 2020 and I can watch the whole thing and enjoy it. Fucking test matches. I will just shoot the commentator because I'll be like, <laughs> like, honestly, it's like a, you don't even need a sleeping pill. Just listen to the fucking commentary. It is like, oh, I feel fuck. like the only, the only day that matters in those matches is the last day, right? That's when it's like make or break. That's when it's really going to count. That's when I'll sit down and watch it. But watch yeah. the entire thing from beginning to end. Jesus. It's like going back to school. Uh, fucking history lesson or some shit. You're just looking at you know, blinking the eyes going, I'm too fucking tired of this shit. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't know. Cricket is just it's good, but not that long, eh? No. Nah. I'm like, no patience for it. Uh, Mick, Please shut the fuck up. About to get a Mick, list, you know. <laughs> Mick's getting his fucking jocks in a knot because we're talking well, about his Well, I know, his because my dad used to make me watch cricket. And especially, do you know what my dad used to do to me? If I was sick from school which I actually was actually sick. One time I had whooping cough and I was sick for like three weeks and the fucking cricket was on. He's like, get out of bed and sit on the lounge. And he took holidays from work and all that was fucking playing was cricket, mate, for three <laughs> weeks straight. Three weeks straight I watched cricket while ill on the lounge. You wouldn't even let me sleep in bed. There was no iPads then. There was no TV in your bedroom. There was no nothing. I laid yeah. on the bed and watched fucking cricket for three weeks. Nah. Mm -mm. Like, but how long, really, can, can you keep your attention span going watching the same match for four days? That's my problem. It's my attention span. Same. Same thing. Okay. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. But like I said, like I, I enjoyed it. Like once, because when I first came here the first time around, I actually, I would, I would give Mick a hard time about it. Like, why are you watching this old man sport and, and you know, whatever, right? The first time I came around, but then when I came back, he actually sat and explained the game to me. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I actually like this. And I, I sat and we watched all kinds of matches together and I actually enjoyed it. I just can't wrap my head around four days, four days no. Ew. No. <laughs> like all right now come on bring back the nrl because i'm 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 over it already yeah where's the footy come on at least the game gets played and it's done and someone wins and someone loses in the same fucking session but like, why have four sessions of playing the same game and no one wins yet. Like, does this make sense? Yeah, I'm like, I can't. I yeah. like, I even told, I told Mick, right? Because uh, he's like, ah, oh, we're missing the cricket to go out today, and we're doing this, so we're 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 gonna have fun, we're gonna enjoy ourselves. But I'm not liking that I'm missing the cricket. It's like, mate, you'll get home and they'll give you all the updates on what happened, mate. You're not missing much. It only matters when it comes down to the last day. Let's be honest. They'll give you every single update and it'll take 30 minutes to give a <laughs> seven hour cricket match an update. <laughs> Nothing happens though. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, Miko. <laughs> it's true. I can now watch the news and you'll get the whole day's worth of cricket update in about 20 seconds. But the the winning day, watch that. But that's it. That's all that matters. Really. Anywho. I know um, everybody hates koalas, but I, I love them so much. Why do people hate koalas? I People hate on koalas a lot. No. But, I mean, um, look at this face. Hmm. And it's just bear hugging the lady. I love it. They're beautiful. No, I don't hate koalas. I love koalas. 
definitely. Oh my goodness. Mix yeah. just glued to the TV, getting all the updates. <laughs> um, what else I have to tell you? I have to tell you something. Oh my god. Have I ever spoken to you about this crazy bitch at work? Which her one? Is, <laughs> uh, there's a lot, but this one's Chris, right? And I'm pretty sure I've been doing hair for like a year. But when she comes to me, she'll be going to a Sydney salon, right? And she moved up here. And she's like had a full color and a few foils, but was like pure white gray naturally. Yeah. And she's like, I just want to go natural. I'm sick of coloring in my hair, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, eight months later, she's pure white, right? And gets a perm and I perm her hair. Oof. Okay. Yeah, like it's a lot. Anyway. It's a lot of damage like, to the hair all at once. Yeah. And the wall, it's been over like eight or nine months. And I finally got her to what she has asked me for in a process so she has hair on her head. And then she's like, I, I hate it. And I'm like, what do you hate about being natural with a perm? And she's like, my friends say I look washed out. And I'm like, okay. Uh, do your friends know that you've probably spent over almost $2,000 to get your hair natural? Oh, no, but they just think I look washed out. And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Anyway, two months ago she comes with this photo. And it's like uh, a transitioning photo for, you know, on uh, Instagram and stuff they have. You probably don't watch them. I watch hair shit on Instagram. Anyway, it's a transitioning thing where people have dark hair and they get like the real white grey foils in the dark hair to transition into grey. She shows me that photo and I'm like, you're not transitioning into grey, though. You are grey. <laughs> and she's like, oh, but can't you put the dark grey in? And I'm like, well, I can, but you're going to hate it. And she's like, why? I said, because it's going to be artificial colour and in about six weeks' time it's going to wash out to a like a brassy washed out color because it's not natural gray yeah and she's like yeah okay i won't do that i'll just stick with whatever anyway she comes in today with the same fucking photo two months later and i'm like i told you i don't want to do this to your hair because you're going to come back to me in four weeks and go i hate it because it's not you're not transitioning you are grey. Like, you know, you've, you've already transitioned out of that. And she's like, I don't care about your face being all grey. And I'm like, all right, I'm sick of you telling me this. I will do this colour in a semi-permanent colour, right? And it's going to cost you $130 for me to do this, but it's going to wash out in four weeks. She goes, oh, well, that's not good value for money. I said, you know what? I'm not doing it. I refuse to do it in a permanent colour because I know for a fact you're going to hate it. And she goes, oh, you don't know that. I said, yes, I do. Yes, I fucking do. And she goes, just do it in a the semi then. And if I like it, I'll come back in four weeks and get it done permanent. I said, yeah, which you'll be paying for. And she goes, yeah. No worries. I'm like, okay, it's like a bet. Like who which is betting a 27-year professional hairdresser who
who is going through every scenario of hair possible, right? But yeah. she's arguing with me. I'm like, okay, I'll just fucking do it. No worries. Did it, washed it out. She goes, I hate it. And I'm like, oh, do you though? Fancy that. And she goes, I think oh, it's one of the. Oh my God. She goes, oh, if it was a bit lighter, I might like it. And I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? Because you've come here for a service. I've given you a service. I've told you you're not going to like it. I've given you the exact same as that fucking photo that you've given me. And now you're saying you hate it. That's not me out of pocket. That's you out of pocket. What do you want me to do? And she goes, oh, can you just lighten it a bit? And I'm like, <laughs> I just did a full head of foils on you. I can't just lighten it a bit. Do you know what I mean? Well, she's got you a know what? In here. No well. matter what she does, she's not going to like it because she's not happy with how she looks, period. And, and a hairdresser or Jesus can't change it if you don't like it. It's not even about how she looks, though. She's got... She's such a horrible, negative, horrible person. My apprentice refuses to talk to her. Jess, my manager, refuses to even look at her because she's so fucking rude. She'll walk up and go, do you ever smile? What's your problem? Or she'll walk <laughs> up and go to my 16-year-old apprentice and go, uh, are you on drugs? Like, she's just one of them rude, <laughs> she's just fucking rude. Dan asks if she wants a cup of tea or coffee. She whips out her own tea bag and goes, you can make me my tea bag that I bring because your tea shit. To Holy Dan. Miserable right, bitch. Like Dan. Do you know what I mean? She's one of them just, and I'm just like, I'm just not going to do her hair anymore. Literally the reason we like, came up with the name Karen. Yeah, she's Karen, but her name's fucking Chris. <laughs> but I'm just like, oh, my God. But anyway, she left. I fucking stripped it out, refoiled it in a lighter color. And I said, I don't care if you don't like this. This is what you asked for twice. And I've done it for the price of one full head. So you can go whether you like it or not. And she's like, oh, but it's my birthday tomorrow and all my friends are meeting me, meeting me at the pub tomorrow for lunch, which is directly across from the salon. I'm like, damn, we're going to get a rope of can after lunch tomorrow. But she shouldn't have friends. She's ve she like she she <laughs> honestly shouldn't have friends because her friends would just say I hate your hair just to piss the can off because she's so fucking rude. Honestly, like uh anyway, we're gonna have drama at work tomorrow, but I'm like, whatever. Bring it on, cunt. Yeah, prepare she's, for she's it. Never prepare for back. it. I'm done with her. Hey. Honestly, I'm done. I'm just gonna do you know what I'm gonna say? Look at my eyes. This is how I'm going to say it. Look at my eyes. I'm going to look at her in her eyes like I'm looking at yours and go, sorry, Chris, but I've bent over backwards to try and please you. In 27 years of hairdressing, I cannot make you 100% happy with your hair, so I feel that I'm not the hairdresser for you and I refuse to do your hair any longer. You need to find a new hairdresser. But thanks for your business and I love you and I wish you all the best. Why? Yeah. Because she doesn't yeah. listen to me. I have 27 years hair experience. I've gone through the same scenario. People don't want to listen. Don't listen. You do it, you hate it. I'm not going to sit there and use two extra hours of my time because you won't listen to me when I say you're not yeah. going to like it. And then I do what they want to do and they go, I don't like it. And then I fix it for free? No. I'm just not doing that. No. Yeah, because it's your it's your time and money going into it. And then no matter what you do, there's no pleasing her. So it's like it, eventually you've just got to say enough is enough. Like just mm -hmm. be done with it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay.
I'm not your hairdresser. You need to find your hairdresser because I'm not it. <laughs> Sorry. I can't do it because she, like, as soon as she walks in the door, every single person in that salon is on edge. Yeah. Because you snap at anyone for anything. That's not okay yep. for business. And other clients look at her like, what? And one of my, one of my bloody awesome country, awesome bumpkin clients I've been doing for like nearly two years, she was carrying on after I did the first colour that she didn't even hear. She would come in after that the colour was rinsed off and she's like, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. What are you going to do? You need to do something. My other lovely client turned around and goes, are you okay? Why are you talking to Lyndall like that? <laughs> and I'm like, I gave her a look like, mm, like you don't even know, like don't go there because she's going to probably punch in the head. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that's how vibe she gets. Whereas I didn't do that. I did what she wanted me to do and I told her she would hate it and she did. Yeah. Like that's not on me, that's on her, but other people around that hear that think, what the hell? You give her what she asked for and, and then – you you try to make her happy. Everyone in the salon can't stand her. And it's like, you got to try to make sure that your other clients are not upset by her actions as well. It's like, it's so many different angles that you have to like make her yeah. happy with. And it's like, fuck mm -hmm. this. It's not okay. Because I do not have one client that walks out unhappy ever. But when she gives the vibe that I've done something wrong, in the salon it makes my other clients go what do you mean Lyndall doesn't do anything like they've had their hair done so many times and nothing's ever gone wrong but this one bitch makes out like I'm incapable or whatever but if they were there for the whole consultation they go this bitch kick her out Lyndall they'd say to me do you know what I mean but they don't see the whole thing only the staff see the whole thing and hear the whole thing and it's on CCT camera and sound what happened. Do you know what I mean? So I don't care what she says or what she does. Do you know what I mean? It's all on yeah, camera. Yeah, no, I do. But the the uh, vibe that she gives to people who come in and go and get in haircuts and blow dries, who are only there for snippets of time, get the vibe that I'm fucked. Because that's how she talks, like I'm fucked. And I'm not. Yeah. And I think it's really bad. It's really bad for vibe and business. I'm just not going to do a hair anymore. I don't blame you. Fuck, I wouldn't do it. I've had to turn customers away for being assholes too, so. Nah, it's just, it's not worth it. Like, and then. Every time she wants me to do these, all these big jobs, she's like, is that the cheapest you can do it? I'm a pensioner. And I'm like, yeah, it's the cheapest I can do it. Like she always wants stuff for nothing as well. Yeah. Like it's just a bad vibe, though, and I'm just, <laughs> you're not worth your $130, cunt. Fuck off. I'll pay you $130 to never come back here. How about that? <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like saying that. And Dan's like, you can't do that. And I'm like, but I fucking would. Yeah. We should probably get the boys over here and come and join us. I know. They're being rude, eh? Well, Dan's running the chat and dropping links and Mick's still glued to the TV. Are you going to come over and say hello? Hello. Mick. No. All right. And Mick. Oh, Mick. Getting like old he, brother. Like he says, he's just a dirty old plumber. And I was like, no, you're not. He's like, yeah, I am.
yeah, my oldest was just messaging me. He was like, how you doing, mom? And like, he's, what'd you guys do today? And like, uh-huh. I'm just trying to respond. And I, sh- I showed him pictures of like us going to the, to Billabong. And he's like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. He'd probably go with you if he was over here. He'd oh, he would love it. He would love it. He would love it. Like, I I know, it, you know, it's hard, though, because he's at an age where he wants to start his own life, and he's done that, right? He's an adult. You know, he's got his girlfriend. He's living with his girlfriend, and they're doing their own thing. Like, I knew right off the bat, like, him moving here wasn't, going to be something that he would want right but you know if it ever comes down to it and like you know things don't work out with him and her and or whatever for whatever reason anything you know and he wants to be here with us I mean he would have so many opportunities he can become an apprentice with Mick and you know like he's there's a lot that you know he's got a lot of opportunities here so it's it's really based on what he wants with his life and no one can force him to do otherwise. Right. I I would never put that on him, but um, you know, at least he talks to us, he talks to the kids and he keeps in touch and that's what's important. Right. He just didn't just disappear. Yeah. hundred percent. Definitely. He's a good boy. And they'll make their own decisions in the long run. They will. Bye. I don't know. I think there's a weird. I don't care whether you're from Canada. I don't care whether you're from fucking Egypt. I don't care where you're from. But there's <laughs> like this weird age group, right? And everyone's different at different times. Like whether yeah. it's 16, like me, or whether it's 20, like Dan. Or whether it's like it's all different age groups, you go through this whole I fucking hate you, parents. I'm gonna do this thing by myself. Yeah. And then all of a sudden some penny drops at some certain age after time and they go, Fuck, I need my mum or I need my dad. That it's a it's a thing. Like I don't know no, it is. should be a psychological thing tracking this shit because it is an actual thing. I went through it at 16 i was paying my own rent my own shit my parents were well off i had like my parents i could have stayed at home and got everything i wanted i didn't want to do what they wanted me to do i yeah. left and went fuck you i do it myself yeah and i, I did the same, I, I did the same thing at 17 yeah but my, okay. my boy my boy um he never wanted to leave me. He wasn't one of those kids. Like he wanted to be with me. He wanted to stay with me. Right. You know, yeah, and, and he's a later on or off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, he, he is. Like, and he, he wanted yeah. to stay with me. And he, you know, he's a good boy. He helped around the house. He helped with his siblings. Like he was not disrespectful. He would have mates over. And if they ever got loud or anything, I just, you know, Cause they had the whole basement, you know, just keep it down for everybody else. And they were, he was always really respectful of the rules. Like, yeah. um, you know, we didn't really have our bickering matches like that. Like we got along, like him and I, we were really good. Like he was practically my best friend. I had him really young and you know, he, he's, he's a good, he's a good kid. He was just unmotivated because mom was taking care of him. That's right. And that right? takes like, a long time to get into that zone where I don't need mum or yeah. I don't need dad. Yeah. And it, it, he was at a point where if I had stayed in Canada, he probably never would have um, gotten a job and he wouldn't have been motivated. Like he had already graduated high school and like he was supposed to be doing something else, like get into a trade or go to college or university or whatever it is like he was supposed to get on that path. Right. Yeah. But he was so comfortable with me that I think he wasn't motivated to do any yeah. of that. And then, um, and I've been raising him his whole life. He's never lived with his father. He never wanted to live with his father. He's like, I'm good where I am. I'll see dad when I see him. But like, I, I didn't, 
uh, I didn't care. Um, he, like he wanted to stay with me, but he was very unmotivated. Like I used to tell him like, listen, I love it. I love that you're here. I love that you help me. I love, you know, you're a good kid. And, um, you know, you're not like these other kids who are doing drugs and partying and drinking. And, you know, like he was, he was good. He was, he is one of the good ones because, um, other parents of, you know, his friends would tell me like, oh, he does this at home and he does that. And I caught him doing this and I caught him doing that. My son was not like that. Mm -hmm. Like he was good, but he was unmotivated. So once I left, he moved in with his dad at first before he moved in with his girlfriend and he got himself a job. Like he, he put his resume out there. Like he got his bank account. He got like, he got everything for himself. Like he was motivated to do it. Right. Yeah. And then he realized he's like, yeah, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, um, you know, live with my dad anymore. I want to live with my girlfriend. I was like, you know what? Um, yeah. You know, you got to follow your own, your own destination, your own path. I did it at 17. You're doing it at almost 20. This is your choice. You, you yeah. gotta, yeah. yeah, you gotta do that. You gotta find that yourself. Like you can't you have, have anybody else. There's a certain, like I said, there's a certain age group where they just have to fucking wake up. Leave, like, leave the nest or be motivated to do more, right? Yeah. One or the other, right? It's either you leave the nest or you stay in the nest, but you start building a nest egg where one day you can say, okay, mom, I've built myself. I've saved this up. I'm going to go out. I'm going to buy my car. I'm going to, you know, uh, get my own place. Like, they're motivated to do these things. And I feel like by me going, like he'll even tell me all the time, like, um, I I'm sad that I'm not with you, but I'm happy at the same time because like, I'm actually doing what I need to do now. Yeah. Right. So it was like, there's some bad, there's some good. He's like, I miss you, but I'm, I'm good. Like I'm taking care of myself and I'm being a grown up, you know? And I, I'm just, it's hard. It's really hard, but he's doing it. And I'm, I'm proud of him, you know, like it's, it's not easy, but I mean, he's doing it and I'm proud of him for it. Like, yeah, but yeah, then, then you've got the other kind of kids that are like the, the teenagers who are just hateful and hate everyone and just want to mm -hmm. just whinge Maybe. about everything. And they want this, they want that, mm -hmm. but they don't want anything for it and they're rude and disrespectful and you know what you, you get one good one and then you get always, one that just yes it's always the poor me scenario like yeah poor me, poor me poor, that's a that's a total different kettle of fish that one yeah like, i know and it drives me fucking mad like my oldest son he's you know he's getting his shit together and he, he was he's always been a respectful kid and then I've got my oldest daughter who literally would look me in the face and be like, I hate you. You don't take care of me. You're bad. Like, she's the one that will literally sit there and shit on you, you know? Can I tell you something, Jess, though? Can I tell you something? Yeah. My brother is older than me. I, it's only me and my brother. We have no other siblings. My brother is 45 years old and still the same. My parents buy him everything, buy his everything, do everything for him. He's like a baby and they still, like, honestly, for a single man at 45, they would have spent over a million dollars on him, setting him up for life, and he hasn't done a fucking thing. There's me, worked at 16, I have six kids. That don't help me unless it's like desperado. I do everything myself because I know I can. Do you know how that affects my brain? I think, why the fuck is my older brother getting everything on a platter? But he, he's done it all his lifestyle. Like he, yeah. he just can't do it for himself. Yeah. And it's a continuous cycle of poor me oh, well, I might as well just kill myself then. No one loves me. You don't love me. Everyone hates me. I've got this life and it's all because of you, but it's not because of anyone. It's because of them. 
My yeah. brother is 45 and still has the mentality of a 20-year-old that he kept going with this whole time. It's been 25 years of the same thing since he was 20 and it has not changed. I'm sorry to say some kids are like that, Jess. And, you, and you know, you sometimes they'll outgrow it and sometimes they won't. They'll get even more nasty about it. My and that's, that's the hard part. That's the hard part to swallow is that I'm sitting here saying to myself, this is a phase. She's going to get over this. She's going to stop this. You know, things are going to get better. But I feel like they're only getting worse. And I'm hoping, right, that eventually after a few years or however long that... Mm -hmm. It, it would eventually easy. wear off, but I don't know when that'll happen. And I don't know if it'll happen because it either will happen and they appreciate everything that I've done for them and be grateful for it and do something with their life, or it'll just continue and she'll just be miserable and ungrateful and feeling entitled for the rest of it. It's like, I never, I don't know what I'm going to get. I have no idea what I'm going to get out of it. I have no idea. None. Yeah. And I'm just and, telling and the you waiting fact, is making me crazy. Yeah. I'm telling you for a fact that uh my brother and I are chalk and cheese and he gets everything. Okay, he doesn't pay for nothing. He just I uh, I'm too sick or you know, he just it's a thing. And it's happened since he was twenty. But I left when I was 16. I've made my life my own. My parents haven't contributed bits here and there, but I not contributed like my brother has been contributed his life. Do you know what I mean? Nothing compared. And you know what? I don't resent that. I just think my brother is sad. Like he's a sad human being. I love my brother, but I don't respect him at all i'm like how can you be a bludgeon since you're 20 and you're 45 years old and you're still getting your mom and dad to pay for your shit yeah but he done that's a, See, it's a fucking fact i think it'll be different with my daughter because she's she's motivated right whereas my son he needed a push in the right direction but on that path to getting that push he was never rude never disrespectful wasn't entitled he helped out around the house. Like he liked to participate in our family. Whereas yeah. Yeah. my daughter would just lock herself in the room and tell her, tell everybody she hates them. She hates her siblings. She hates her life. She has the biggest bedroom out of all the kids. She gets special treatment out of all of them because we're constantly going out of our way to please her. But she is it's motivated. Like, I know she wants to go to university. I know um, she's a, an amazing um, soccer player. Like she's motivated to do really well in her life. But I feel like even when she does, she'll look back and not be grateful for anything that she's given. Right? Like the whole time that you were being raised, you know, you're going to be ungrateful for all of it. And then you're going to get to a point in your life where you, she is going to be something. She's going to do something with herself, with her life. She's very motivated, but I feel like she'll forever be like, well, you know what? I did it on my own. I don't need you. I don't need you. I didn't need you. You didn't do nothing for me. Like she'll be ungrateful forever, but she Never. will do something for her life. Whereas my son, he's now doing something with his life, but he'll be like, my mom helped me get there. Yeah. Right? Like my son, his grade eight graduation, and it was both times, his grade eight graduation and his high school graduation, both um, me and his father were there, right? And him and his dad were like best friends. I was the parent and his dad is just a friend. Right. And I'm thinking once he comes off of the stage, he's going to run over his dad. High five. I did it. You know, like I'm thinking this is what's going to happen. And for both ceremonies, he ran off the stage, came over to me, picked me up off the ground because he's six foot one. I He towers over me, picks me up off the ground. He goes, thank you for helping me get here. I fucking bawled like a baby. I've never cried so hard 
in my life. And he did it both times. And he turns to his dad, you know, you helped too, but, and he goes, but you know, mom has really kicked my ass to get here, you know? And, and his dad's like, absolutely. You should be kiss, kissing her and hugging her because she's done this for you. You know, like through the years he had his issues in school. I had to advocate for him. I had to do everything for him. And he's appreciative of that. My daughter is not like that. She would, she won't give me that. Mm -mm. That's right. Cool. So like I'm dealing with two completely different kids. And of course, every single kid in this planet is different. That's mm -hmm. fine. But I just feel like I keep waiting for that day where she's finally going to be like, you know, I appreciate everything you did for me, but I don't know if it'll ever come. Well, you never know. Some people are later than others. Like I know for a fact that my cousin didn't speak to her mom till she was 25. And now they are like this. Well, I'm just, I'm just hoping for it. That's all I'm doing is I'm, I'm hoping for it. I'm hoping for the best. I'm staying positive, but let me tell you, it breaks your fucking heart on the path to get there. In the pathway, yeah. But do you know what happened? She had a baby. Mm. My cousin had a baby. And then when I need you, mum, and I, I, you know, I, she admitted she and now they're just inseparable and the baby has a nan like do you know what i mean it's just a yeah, weird it's it's like something to snap you out of your bullshit yeah it is uh give me a second i gotta go for a wee i'm dying i'm dying I need to pay too, babe. Don't hit the cord. I'm going to pay too. Back in a sec. I have a glass of red wine and a whistle. All right. I'm going to take a little break from the beer. Oh, she's gone too. <laughs> A movie starting. What is this? Do you know what it is? What movie is this, love? Do you know? Oof. There you are. Hi. Decided to switch to wine. Cheers to the wine. Cheers. I got my special cup. I love that you have a special cup. Me too. It makes me feel like I have a chalice and I'm actually a queen of just my wine. You're definitely a queen, babe. Just for I the wine. Know. Yeah. Queen of something, but you're definitely a queen. <laughs> queen of having the patience of the Jesus. <sighs> we you have, have to have the patience. But you know what? We had such big plans for nine days off. And the bitch ran us up the ass. And then we couldn't drive anywhere. And then... But wait, like I'm trying to figure out because what I saw from the pictures, it didn't look like your car was damaged. They she damaged it really bad then if you couldn't drive it. Well, we shouldn't have because the back end, when the car moved out, the back end got ripped off and the light 
it's a safety thing or some shit. But because she hit us with speed, the airbag lights come on, but we're in park. So oh, if we yes, drive, the airbag would have been off. That's the problem because we were in park. Like, we're parked. If we were still in drive and he hadn't pulled up yet, the airbags would have went off because it was a push, do you know what I mean, like a collision. Gotcha, yeah. So seven airbags in that thing and we've all got lights on them uh, um, engaged. Yeah, it's a sensor. It's a sensor issue. You're not supposed to drive cars like that because one bump, you could have seven airbags just go off in your face. Yeah, it's a sensor. It's that, that, like, um, I can't uh, believe that happened. Yeah, it's like dangerous. But anyway, after that, I got gastro for four days. Uh, you were telling me about that. Like, yeah. You're going to be fucking joking. And Dan's like, oh, maybe it was just you had too much seafood or this and that. Next minute. The two boys are fighting over the toilet all night, shitting their asses out. And I'm like, that ain't that ain't seafood. This is uh, like gastro is highly contagious. Yeah. And Havana yeah. and Dan, nothing. Yeah, but it's 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 highly contagious. It's really bad. It spreads really quick. So bad. Oh, I'm all it, all it takes is um touching the the flusher on a toilet or a handle anything it the next person will get it yeah my my son no, and i got it know it shit or spew i'm like which end is it coming i don't know so you like, don't know how you got it i don't know no idea but then when i went back to work the beauty therapist was like oh how was your christmas break and I'm like not so good and she's like never was mine I had gastro for four days and I'm like oh my god was it a client of someone like dirty people that's that's crazy I'm like yeah same she's like what I'm like did you do one of my clients nails or did you do it like and she's like I don't fucking know I'm too fucked I don't want to know. Just go to work. And I'm like, yeah, well, you go to work too. <laughs> but the beauty therapist next door is like, yeah, she had a fuck. Yeah, it's probably a communal. Uh, yeah, it, it, like it, I had to learn about it really quick because um, my son, when he was a baby, my, my first, when he was a baby, he caught it, right? And... Like the poor thing was still in nappies, and he, wow. he would just, he would just no, but he would explode right out of the nappy, and then he would get really upset because he's the kind of child who didn't like to get dirty like that, and he would cry, and like right away I'm there changing his nappy and washing my hands, but like it got really bad. We ended up taking him to um, the hospital, um, and. Um, while we were there, because it takes so long, like hours to be seen and taken care of, in mm. the time that we got there to the time that we were seen, then all of a sudden I got sick really mm. bad, really mm. bad. And that, that hospital actually has a pediatric department, a specialized pediatric department. It's where I gave birth to all my kids. So they have a pediatric department and then they have the regular adult department. And then we had to be separated. So I'm in one wing and he's in the other and we're both on isolation. His dad was running from one room to the other. I got my mom running from one room to the other. It was a fucking nightmare. And I learned wow. all about gastro. And I said to myself, like, I cannot go through this again. If gastro ever comes into my house with one kid and they all get it, I will lose my fucking mind because it was a nightmare. And I, man, you're really lucky that the youngest didn't get it as well. And Dan was good because you, you had him to help you because mm -hmm. I, I tell you that thing spreads like wildfire. It's like full clock. Yeah, full fuck. The whole house is fucked. Fun, fun. <laughs> uh, and 
That's the only time, but there's one time before. No, I think we got uh, that as a symptom. We all had COVID. Yeah. And then every single one of us was shitting and spewing and temperature. And it was like every single towel, every single sheet, every single thing was getting washed with fucking bleach and like it was on a continuous cycle of fucking germ killing <laughs> washers, right? Yeah. But by the time you replace the shit, they'd be spewing or shitting all over it like a oh, fuck. It was just, it was so such a nightmare. It's the worst ever. And I promised myself that's never, ever going to happen ever again. So since then, when they were little, that was when COVID happened. When my children go to the toilet, they wash their hands with antibacterial soap. Then they walk out of the bathroom and they use a sanitizer on top. Right? Every single time they go to, whether it's a wee or a poo or anything, that's their routine. And I'll film it one day. I'll go, all right, everyone go to the toilet and I'll film it to prove that that's a fucking system. And do you know what? <laughs> We still got gastro. How the fuck does that happen? A, a handle. So, that's it. Because we that's had people it over Christmas. We had people coming and going all Christmas Day, people coming and going on all, all Boxing Day. It would have just took one kiss off someone. Honestly, that wasn't feeling the best, but didn't say they weren't feeling the best. That's where I feel. Like, honestly, like, that we haven't been anywhere, but people have come here. Yeah, they that's, it, that's all it takes. All all it takes. Around the whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, some other bastard would have had it. And then they've come here, gives the kiss, cuddle, you know. Yeah, that's, that's how it is. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. When, uh, when COVID hit, right, um, I got, I, I'm one of those people who got really scared because, because of my medical conditions. My doctor said that, you know, if you catch it, it's, it's very possible you'll be one of these people who's fighting for their lives, right? So I was terrified, terrified. I had a station in the front of my house for anyone who came in the door needed to sanitize i had extra clothing you would have to take your clothes off put it in a bin put it directly in the wash hands needed to be sanitized right at the door i had a a basket of masks for kids going out and coming in when you bring in home your dirty mask put it in there they all get washed like i had this crazy system because I am that crazy when it came to it, because like if I get sick and I've got these all these kids depending on me, they didn't have anyone else. They had me. Right. I get sick. Then what am I going to do? So I was so crazy anal about it. You don't understand. Like, I'm sure anybody who came to my house hated, hated me for it, but I don't care. I was grateful because um, my son, my oldest, he did catch it. He had his own, uh, like own a uh, unit in the, in the basement and he only had one toilet upstairs. So he'd come upstairs, use the toilet. He would have to disinfect everything. And then I would leave his dinners on a table outside the door and he would come and he would, um, you know, get his food, bring it down and then come upstairs. I would have gloves on to take his plates and everything to the sink. Cause I was so scared. I was terrified of being sick and not being able to run my household. So mm -hmm. I, I know all about that whole disinfecting thing and, and all of that. Like, I don't care if anybody thinks I'm a pain in the ass about it. I That's how I am. Everywhere I go, I have hand sanitizer and <laughs> everything because yeah, so I just, I can't. Yeah. I, I have a shitty immune system. I can't fight it. Yeah. In saying that, Working in hairdressing, I have had COVID four times. Four. I only had it once, but.
but because of my conditions, I ended up in the emergency department on oxygen. Yeah, had, you know, and that's when I first, that's when I first met Mick, literally, we, we had just met on YouTube. We weren't even talking off of YouTube or anything. And I disappeared off of YouTube, but um, I was in the hospital, like watching streams and I noticed that he had disappeared too. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, where has he been? Like, I don't know where he is. When I finally came back, I was talking about how I got COVID. He pops into the stream and he's like, I've had COVID too. We had it at the same exact time in different parts of the world. And we had never had it before that at all. Yeah. But it's like, it's like when you least expect it, because then I caught it obviously from going out and running errands when I was so anal about it, the kids never brought it home. No one else brought it in my house, but then me doing something, I brought it in and I had to seclude myself from everybody. Yeah. Uh, but do you know what? I feel my kids are carriers because I've had it four times. Dan's probably had it four times and only tested himself twice positive. But we've tested all the kids every single time. They're all negative for weeks and weeks on end, never positive ever. Not one of them children have been positive, not once. Is that weird? That's fucking weird. Better immune systems. It's not. It's better immune systems. Um, uh, some people have better immune systems than others. And then some people have extremely weak immune systems. And that's all it takes. My youngest, she's exactly like me. My doctor literally said that she is a physical copy of me in every single way. She's literally like we have jokes about it because he delivered all of my kids. And he's not a pa pediatric specialist. But when you're in the hospital having a baby, they have to talk to the pediatric specialist. And so he was my OB. He's my obstetrician. He delivered all my kids, all four of them. And he said, I know all of your kids. And when I compare files, she is the only one who is a literal genetic copy of you. It's like you made her on your own in the lab. <laughs> so did you have a private doctor over there or were you in the public system? So in Canada, how it works is um, all health care is free. All of it. You don't pay for any health care. So if you need to go to a doctor, so that's a, a GP, family doctor. Um, if you need to go to just a regular walk-in clinic, because we have things that are called a walk-in clinic. You don't need to book an appointment. You don't need to have a doctor. You, you just need to walk in, give them your, because we have something called a health card, which is just for the Ontario health system. You give them the card. And they can see you no problem. The government is what's billed. What you have to pay for is like prescriptions from the chemist. You have to pay for out of pocket unless you have a private insurance company. Yeah. But all the everything is covered like um, em emergency department, hospital stays, all that is covered, all of it, unless you need medications on top of that. Right. Yeah. So. Um, I had a pediatrician just for the, the kids. And then I had one just for uh, me to have babies. So I had, I had, when I was back in Canada, I had four specialized doctors that were just m for my conditions, right? Yeah. We don't have to pay for any of that unless um, we need, you know, prescriptions, right? So this man, he was, he, I still call him my saint. He delivered all my kids. He was the best. He got me out of the hospital in 12 hours after having a C-section. I was out the door. Wow. And usually people need to stay for 24 to 48 hours. He had me out the door because he's like, nah, she's done this. She's good. He checked all my, 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 my levels. And then he, and he talked to the pediatrician about the baby's levels. All right, get out of here. You, you guys are good. Like, that's the healthcare there. But let's say you need to see a specialist for something, right? For your heart, for your lungs, for anything. You can wait months to a year. 
and surgeries, you can wait years for a surgery. Because it's covered by the government, you have to wait forever. That's yeah. the only problem that the Canadian healthcare system has. But that happens in Australia too. But on I paid $48,000 to just get my eldest son, Brace, who's nine, right? And then when I was 16 weeks pregnant, they said he had trisomy 13, uh, 18, which is worse than trisomy 13, which is Down syndrome. They told me to abort him. Oh, my but goodness. I paid $48,000 to have my first baby, right? I had, I said no. No, 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 not happening. I carried him to 38 weeks and they said that your child is going to die within two years because he has trisomy 18. I said, I don't care. At least I have a baby. And if he survives, he survives. He's fucking nine. But does no, he actually have it? No. When I gave birth, I had seven doctors and four nurses and a humidity crib at my birth, which was shitting my fucking pants. Okay. I gave birth to him. I didn't even see him. They took him, did whatever they did with these seven doctors, specialists and whatever and all these nurses. And then half an hour later, I was getting stitched up. They passed him under my chest and said, you've got a healthy baby boy. So they misdiagnosed it. That's awful. And had it been someone who was ready and willing to listen to the doctor, you just would have ended that baby's life. Like it's yeah. fucking doctors. Like I swear, I, I oh, it's just, it's yeah. one thing that made me upset. And it's why I, I went to school to become a doctor until... I surprised and got pregnant with my son. And then because I had that drama with my first one, I lost the baby in between him and my seven-year-old. I lost the baby at 11 weeks. They gave me a DNC, cleared me out. A month later, I was pregnant with Madden, who's now seven. They turned around and said that he has a severe heart condition and should terminate. And I said, fuck no. In oh, hell. Shit. Because it's all off your record. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, nah, not happening. Next minute he comes two weeks early, but he's the size of a fucking house. He was nine pounds something two weeks early. Oh, my God. They try and take him. They check his heart. Oh, no, he doesn't have a hole in his heart like we thought. Must have been a shadow on the thing. He's seven. Yeah. He's now seven with no conditions. So, you know, that's my experience from Australian pediatrician specialists. Don't say yes to them. Ever. That's a horrible experience. I'm sorry you had that. Like, I could have just terminated both them because of doctor's suggestion. Yeah. No, no. no. And then Havana, I was on the pill. And fell pregnant within fucking a week meeting Daniel. And she's strong as an ox. And then they tried to say, oh, you're in. They tried to tell me I'm a high risk category. And I said, there's no fucking high risk now. There's my fucking five year old and there's my three year old. Look at them running around. I'm not high risk though. Yeah. And then I refused to go on the high risk thing. I didn't get all the scans like they wanted. I didn't do anything what they wanted. I just did a normal pregnancy. I ate what I wanted. I just said, fuck you. I'm not listening to you. And she's crazy smart, eh? Like, she's just, like, hectic. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with her. 
Like I'm I'm like she's too too healthy or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I literally refused a high risk unit support pregnancy for her. I had that with um Jackson, my second oldest yeah. son. Yeah, they whisked him away to the unit. Let's get the boys on here. We're, we're talking too much about uh, girly parts and babies being born. <laughs> too much trauma, traumatic. But you know what? We're strong because of this shit. That makes you strong because you know what? You don't have to believe every doctor that comes along your side at all. Never. Don't have to believe them. You could listen to them, but you don't have to take it all on board. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah it's 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 a fucked up situation. It is, but we we just hope that like at the end of it, like we've done the right thing and made the right decisions. That's it. That's all we can do. I don't know why you're gonna pay forty eight thousand dollars for a child that fucking costs you fucking a million dollars. <laughs> really? Fucking hell. Where's Dan? I know. Where are you, Dan? Tell him to come up so the boys can come up. Nah, the boys thing we're talking to. No, Jess and I are talking as if we're not on YouTube. We're talking as if we're, like, talking. <laughs> true? Do you agree? Yeah, we're absolutely talking, like we're true. We're talking, but no one else is here. I'm just, I'm just surprised we didn't mention, like, vaginas at, at any point. <laughs> and stitch-up time and friggin' whatever the rest of it is. He suffers. <laughs> Come on, Daniel Bennett. No, fuck off. It's your stream. I'm not running your show, motherfucker. Mm -mm. Get in here. Oh, what are you going to do if I just go in there and video chat Jess? Then what are you going to do? You're going to have two blank screens. Aren't you? <laughs> not that I don't love you, my dear, but like this Absolutely. is not <laughs> Mick's got the shit that uh, the boys haven't taken over. The boys need to take over, don't they? Yeah, they do. Doesn't mean we can't sit here with them and they can do all the talking, but I mean, if we want to go off screen, we can do that too. Fine. Exactly. Get here now, Daniel. Puffing your chimney out. <laughs> Come on. Daniel Bennett. It doesn't take that long to have a cigarette, seriously. I don't know. <laughs> Bloody mail. Have you taken down your Christmas tree already? Nah, she's still up. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank God. I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> At the I, I, I haven't taken it down either. Nah, the sound's all down normal, but hi, fuck it. Nah, <laughs> I haven't taken it down either. I, I told Mick, I was like, okay, I promise. Once you go back to work, I'm gonna take up, take down the tree, put all the Christmas things away, you know, clean the entire house, like. I'll do it, but for now, I'm enjoying just hanging out with you, okay? So, it's good. That's my excuse. <laughs> yeah, no. That's not happening. Save the tent in the backyard from New Year's lap. 
I'm not going to lie to you. I have done camping with my kids in my backyard multiple times. And they and loved it. It's still up now. It's still up. Like, <laughs> the day it got put up, it's still up. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Babe, then, you getting your like, chair? He looked yeah. out the back and he goes, probably should take that tent down. I'm like, yeah, probably should. He's okay. like, oh, maybe Saturday. Yeah. Nah, bring your chair over. No, yeah, chair. she's still pitched as shit. Like, nothing wrong with her. She's still pitched up like nothing's ever slept in it. Honestly, we're like, yeah. No. Oh, well, when it comes to Dan, he's gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. No, one of them gunners. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna, gonna do, do it. it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, when? Oh, no, I'll do it. Yeah, when? Uh, gonna do it. Gonna. <laughs> Man, Roro. It's like, it's a sturdy 10. It's not going nowhere. And I'm like, yeah, it's not going nowhere, but, you know, whatever. I'm fucking spewing I'm going to work Saturday. I'm just gonna get back into work mode. I'm gonna work Sunday too. <laughs> I don't know. I'm fucking going on a cruise this year, hundred percent. Yeah, you gotta do it. You gotta enjoy life while you can. I just can't keep working all the time, eh? Like, I have to keep working. I know that. But, you know, there's going to be a break for, you know, fun shit. But we're not letting people, you know how, like, people work, you know, all the time and all that shit, right? And then on a weekend they do fun shit with, like, friends and they do shit outside of the home. Yeah. We don't do that. So yeah, no we 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 don't, yeah we we don't do that either. Like there's no break. Like there's no brain break. It's just the same. It doesn't matter what routine. It is, it's all the same. It's yeah, it's all routine. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's Saturday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's just, it's just, it's just the same over and over and over and over and over. Like it's just continuous. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you need, like, a mental break from that. Yeah. Like, not in your home. Like, elsewhere. It's like. hard. Yeah, it's hard. No, I get it. Daniel Bennett, you get in here right now. <laughs> Ice cream snacks at midnight are parent approved. <laughs> All right, let me go for a wee again and set up mixed chair so we can sit. All right, there we go. Let's go there. 
Okay. 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 Where's Dan? He's coming. All right, he's coming. Sorry, soft guy. He better come. He's coming. I said, getting in now. He doesn't take that long to smoke a diary. Daniel Bennett. Are you going to bed or are you going to sit next to Dad? I'll sit next to him. All right. I mean, because I've got all staff on tomorrow and they can fucking pick up moss like the fucking they're good stuff but they've been lazy this week hey eh? and it just comes with owning the business because every bastard wants the owner to do the her do you know what i mean so it's like oh, fuck, these can't just can't someone else do it you know what i mean like it's just a loyalty thing or whatever and 90 not i reckon 98 percent of people that walk through the door are beautiful but some can't fuck me i just want to fucking stab my scissors through their juggler but i'm like ah oh, so nice <sighs> Danny to record me sometimes because you'd be like, oh, is that even Lindell? She doesn't swear or she's very polite and she's very wordy with the technical hairdressing words and whatnot. Your audio is gone, babe. Can't hear. Well, I got, I got you. Got it. Mm hmm. Daniel Bennett. That Tom. Black Fuck Fucking make me work all day and then work your own channel. Oh, <laughs> fuck off. Oh, piss off, lazy motherfucker. Could you fix washing machines all day? Put on <laughs> Good work, doll. Yeah, that took a lot of um, mechanical brain skills to um, oh, fix the off. washing machine. Doesn't mean I run your fucking live. This is your channel. I don't have a channel. I don't want a channel ever. You're good. Now you got to plug the charger in down. Oh, that's what happens yeah. when you don't run your own channel, isn't it? Yeah. The charger flips out, doesn't it? Yeah, you got to be careless. Yeah, because I don't care. Oh, you should? Well, I don't. I care about talking to Jess. Because all the lovely people on here care about you. No, they don't. Half yes. of them hate me. No, they don't. Mm. They all love you. They don't like Not by LC's recommendation. Lovely CJ said, Dan, you made Miko rage quit. Lol. For fuck's sake, Dan. So you, you unplug the charger again. I didn't fucking touch it. You did. You just touch the stand. How about you sit in Primo then? No. We'll swap. Can we swap? If it makes you feel better. It does make me feel better because right. this is not my channel. This is your channel. I don't mind. As long as you. As long as you. Shoulder. Boys, there you go. There for the boys. Sorry, Jess. No, you're good. Mick. I think it was, I think it was awesome. You two having a good old yarn together. It was cool. Make your chairs waiting for you.
Yeah, but that's not fair because Jess and I could just talk about shit for seven hours. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> no, it's not it's your channel. It's not Jess's channel. It's not your. It's not my channel. It's your that's channel. That's right. It's going to be, it's gonna be the boys mm -hmm. kicking back with Mick and all the other beautiful people. Well, it's cool. Hooper said, "Let's go to the pub. Sounds good, brother." Yeah, Hooper. Imagine if we're all at the pub at the same time, would be cool. Oh, that'd be messy. Oh, of course, you would say something like that. It'd be messy because it'd be like, Jess, you're having a shot? Let's go. No worries. Lovely CJ said, yes, yes, hoop, hoops. What part of Australia are you from, lovely CJ? You just went for a diary. Is CJ um up near where you and Mick are, lovely Jess? No, she's not. Uh, from what I understand, I think she's near Victoria. Okay, down near LC. So she must be... Um, Melbourne. Melbourne. There you go. She answered for you. Oh, yeah. So I, I think is Melbourne like two or three hours behind us and four hours behind you? I have no idea. I think it is. I have no idea. Melbourne. Yeah, uh, yeah Melbourne's not I the same. two hours. Oh, no, it's the same time. So yeah, she's the same on the same time as you guys. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Melbourne's near LC. What the fuck outlaw said? Nah, he's in Perth. Yeah. Um, Western Australia. LC's in Western Australia. We've never been to Melbourne. Because I'm pretty sure um LC he's um three hours behind us. I'm sure. Uh I think you're right because he's two hours behind us and you guys are an hour ahead of us, so in total I think it's three hours. Is that a um gaming chair that Miko is sitting on? Yeah, it's a gaming chair. Yeah, yeah that's mad. Hey, how are you, mate? Good, brother. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, good you. How are you? Good, mate. How's so your overseer going? You same overseer as mine? Pardon, mate? How's your overseer going? Yeah, good. Good? Yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, cheers. Hair comfy? Mm. It actually is good for the lower back, but yeah. Mm. Sorry I didn't talk much about cricket because I yeah, I know like Shane is it Shane Warren and um yeah, I don't know too much about cricket. No, nah, no, no, nah, we don't need to sit down and talk about cricket. That's I was just banging on about it because of you know, that's just what I enjoy watching. This time of year it's only really cricket and what, unless you like tennis, but yeah. Yeah. Unless you like tennis, fucking whatever. This is this yeah. is what I mean. Did I come in and play with people's hair? No. I just walked in and wanted to have a chat. Now someone's touching my fucking hair. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Good. I don't really care. I just wouldn't mind a chat with a bloke. Is that all right? It's fine. Okay. Can we have a conversation? Yeah. Who do, you, Thank you. do you follow um, you follow the Cowboys, eh, in footy? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Yes, only because I live in Townsville, but yeah, ordinarily, yeah, well, yes, I do, yeah. Yeah, cool. otherwise, uh, actually, who do you follow? I follow um, Parramatta. I was going to say, I thought you said Parramatta, yeah. So, both no, teams that are player, but cricket is not a thing. Look, I have watched, um, you know, like the one days and that, 
in cricket. Yeah. I've looked at them. More than 20, 20, but I like when you talk about players' names and all that, I really don't know what the players' names are. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'll see. We, yeah, I, I guess you know. I grew up in South Australia. You know, or, there was nothing else to do apart from in the summer. You bloody played cricket or tennis if you wanted to, and in um, winter she was AFL, and that was the only two choices you had. So there was no. Mm. You couldn't, well, unless you played golf, but what golf, well, it wasn't much of a thing. So it was pretty much just cricket or football, AFL. So, yeah, it's and, you know, you remember, yeah, oh man, all your, you know, all, all the all the dads used to get together and watch cricket and carry on, have beers and watch the shit. And I'm sure the Victorians and, um, and I, I remember um, playing heaps of cricket when I was a kid. But it's yep. funny, I played a lot of cricket when I was a kid, right? And even like football, but I never continued to follow cricket for some reason. I don't know why. But when uh, I got older, I'd, like, yeah, I played NRL football and then I did watch the one day cricket. But the other crickets that went longer than one day, I, yep. know, I, got, bored, I got bored of it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, and a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, it's sort of a game like test cricket is sort of a game for me personally, and I'm I'm sure he whether he agrees or not because I know he watches it. It's um it's a game that like you'll you'll have it playing in the background. You keep an eye on it. You're doing things around the house. You'll come in, come out, check on the score. You don't sit there fucking for 24 hours a day watching it. You just yeah. come in and out, keep, keep keep tabs on the score. Um, and yeah, just follow that way, like just. Test cricket is like the, harm, the hardest form of the, of the game. It, it is the hardest. And that's why, you know, in my that's my opinion. Um, because and it's sort of be and it'd sort of be like um like Australia playing um India or um or Pakistan or um England. Yeah. Like in that they Pakistan, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, like when they do, I don't know if it, I could be wrong, but how they do like a, is it a week match or something? And Yep, yep. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much like, that's the easiest way to describe yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. And so, one time I went um, and watched, like I, I don't really follow um, soccer, but one time, like I've been to heaps of football matches and that, but. One time I went to a soccer match with um, Manchester and um, I think the Mariners. Mm. And just the way that the crowd carried on, like, and singing and singing their chants and, like, it was so much more insane than going to any football match that I've ever been to. Like, even – and even, like, a um, – like a state of origin match, like back in the day, they were mad. But I don't know, like the chance and the way people carry on at a soccer match is so different. I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah. But even yeah, like today, for example. So, you know, to give you an example of what cricket can do, you know, they they raised. Well, the last horse I saw today, they had two and a half million dollars raised. For the Breast Cancer Foundation just today. Yeah, uh, that's or, I'm not sure if that was today or the whole test, but that's how much they've raised for breast cancer. So they, you know, like you got to think of this as a whole, like a whole, you know, grand scheme of things. Not just about, you know, a lot of people get on board and try and use this as a avenue to, you know, help people out, help charities out, which is this is what I like about the game too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's um, that's a lot of money to be raised by a game of cricket who everyone says is boring. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the people who watch it appreciate it. Yeah. And each to their own, 100%. Each to their own. Like, you would not catch me sitting there watching a game of golf on TV. Like, and I'll also... Sit, being, I'll sit there and watch a game of darts, but that's, yeah, not golf. Like, being honest, that aspect, you know what I mean, for someone to raise $2 million from a cricket game is, like unbelievable like you don't even see like you think of all the other games you watch during the year do you know what i mean like football and all that 
I never see him raise that much money or any money. You don't get told about any money raised for any. for cancer or anything. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, the way you said that, I think that that's awesome. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, and it is you know, money. It's, it's just because you know the culture, you know, the culture of the game. I guess there's a lot of people that. You know, get on board and and it, don't get me wrong. This is like probably one of the apart from uh, apart from soccer, it's like cricket's a massive worldwide game, especially like in India, uh, England, and you know us those sort of countries like cherish this game because we've played it together for fucking like, forever since yeah. probably early 1800s, I'm assuming. And um, yeah, no, I don't know. You either you either get them to watch cricket. Depends what you're doing and grow up. Like probably my kid, my kids bath never watch it in their life, but my dad used to watch it. And I remember him sitting there, the boys, the dad and his uncles and shit and friends have a couple of beers and watching the game on a Sunday afternoon when it's fucking blistering hot in summer. And that's what you did. You know, that's why they call it the summer of cricket. You have a beer in the summer and just chill out, watch the game of cricket. You put a Put a snag on the barbie, mate, and away you go. Crazy brother, like I remember me old boy um, like having a barbecue before I even knew to play football. I think I was like four or five years old. My yep. dad's um, introduces to um, cricket. He's in his good old budgie smugglers in the good old summer heat. Yeah, yeah. That's how you know what I mean? Playing cricket, yeah. showing us as kids how to play cricket. Yeah. Then, it was crazy, and it was a good time back then. Like we even played like cricket all the time at our front yard, and then it went to um beach cricket. We played heaps of beach cricket, and then yeah, all of a sudden I think um, winter come and NRL football come in, and then yeah, like then my dad because he's a bit of a fanatic on football. Yeah, then. Like, surprisingly, back when we were younger, that's all we did as kids was play cricket. We did. And I'm surprised, like, when we got a bit older that my dad didn't put us in a cricket team or something to play cricket. But Yeah. But, yeah, but, then so my yeah. dad got that focused on football. You quit football because your dad expected too much from you. Tell yeah, him that. Yeah, like, I ended up – my dad was a hard man, brother. And, yeah, like, just say if I missed a tackle or I'd done something wrong off the field, I'd cop it, brother, all the way home. Do you know what I mean? It went on for years and years. And then one day when I got old enough, I think I was, like, 17. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I'm not a nasty person, but I copped shit off my dad for years and years and years. You're not good enough. Rah, 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 put me down. And then other times when I would play good, do you know what I mean? He'd bribe me. He'd go, you score this game and you play Unreal, I'll give you 50 bucks. So I'd be trying my hardest. And sometimes, yeah, I would get 50 bucks off him. Other times I'd cop heaps of shit from him. But majority yeah. of the times I would cop heaps of shit. And then I just, when I got old enough to know, I had enough. Yeah, and I'm just like, ah, oh, well, I'm not playing football anymore. Yeah, fair enough. Your choice was from the I was going to go up here, Dan, just hang on a second. You're all right, brother. Poor lovely Jess. Have say hello to lovely Jess. She's calm. It's okay, lovely hey, Jess. Lyndall's here. Lyndall's like, gee, she's so cute. She's very cute. <laughs> anyway, apart from cricket, um, so we've basically done the same thing as with the chat that what happened prior to the conversation that just ended. Um, so let's talk about, um, let's talk about the VL turbos. Yeah, I'm going to get me VL on the road. I reckon in the next three months, I'm going to get it on the road. Bullshit. You know, you... But I'm going to. Mick, he's waiting for this car to get ridden off and insurance, and he's like, I need three grand of the insurance money. What the fuck, Mick? So good. 
No, I don't doubt. It. I reckon, like I said, that Dan, you could probably sell that for I reckon at least hundred grand. I'll keep it. I'll drive up to bloody Townsville and pick you up, brother. Well, you reckon she'll run that far? Yeah. He wants yeah, three right. grand off this write-off money for the car, which hasn't even been rid off yet, to do shit. And I'm like, bullshit, what car am I left with then? And he's like, <laughs> well, you have to find one. Oh, but oh, I need to get a grand. Looks like it's an Uber okay. for you. What? Looks like you'll be going Uber, Uber to work and back. Uh, I'll, I'll find her a car, but if they drive it off, definitely. He's <laughs> banking on a butt, but he's like, I need three grand for me other shit. I'll drive it up to Townsville, brother, and I'll let you drive it. You can chuck a big burnout out the front of your house. And I'll yeah, no, the last, last time I did that, mate, it was, I had I had a, yeah, I had a same sort of car as you, but it was a 351 XD with a lot of shit done to it, and First time I ever did that, I managed to drive it down the street, do a burnout round a roundabout, and ride her off straight into a tree. So she's right; she'll be insured, Bella. It wasn't, but um, yeah, that was I'll that's get, going back fifteen years ago. I'll get the veil insured. And yeah, matter. do that that way. I'll crash it for you, and you can claim the insurance. Yeah, she'll be right. Yeah, sounds Especially good. Good, good frapping out of it. Well, I won't freak. I'll tell you one thing. I'll, I won't run up in the ass of someone else in a bottle of it. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, so, no. you can get insurance for the stupid bloody whatever that stupid car was is with Shannon's. <laughs> so, can we get a good um, call? Did all love have insurance? Yeah, um, she was in shop with um, NRMA. Okay, so she's she'll be proper covered then, yeah. Yeah, and we're in short with um Shannon's. Oh, well, that's even better. Mm. Shannon's is probably one of the best, if not uh, probably one, probably the best. And they're Aussies when you talk to them. It's fabulous. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, this is um even in short with Shannon's too. Mm. Yeah, right. Eh? And it cost me and Lyndall three hundred and eighty bucks a month. For the house yeah. and car insurance. That's not bad. That's, yeah, that's good. But you yep. bring them up and they're all Aussie. Never get an Asian ever. Never an Indian. But if the house burns down, it's insured for um, 900000 Yep, yep. So if the house burns down, yeah. So do you want me to come and do a do- job on it this weekend? <laughs> not that it's going to burn down, but... <laughs> 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 so, yeah. But we only paid um three hundred and ten thousand for the house, but yeah. we spent um about a hundred and fifty thousand on it. Yeah, nice. So all up we spent but with the house and what we spent was about four fifty. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we've pretty much nearly doubled our money. But we got evaluated um, last year, and they said it's worth um, nine hundred thousand. Jesus! They said, so yeah, we at least doubled our money. Yeah, good. In, in four years, but yeah, okay. Well, yeah, that that's good, mate. It's good. Yeah. You on the heavies or the or the middies? On the um. Good old Great Northern, brother. Oh, the, the whitefish, yeah. But what we're going to probably do this year, because um, mum what, sold her house and she's been living in a caravan for the last um, year and a half on the side of our house. So... It's not a bad caravan. No, it, it's... It's a mad caravan that mum owns. It's like an $80,000 caravan. It's a beautiful caravan. But what we're going to do, because we're on a big property, me and Linda are um, going to refinance on the house and we're going to like, build a two-bedroom like granny flat up the back. Oh, yep, yep. And then we've got a massive shed beside the house 
and we're going to turn that into another two bedroom, but with an upstairs. Well, yeah, right. So if you're ever in need and you need somewhere to live, brother, just drive down this way, mate, and you'll be all good. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I always wondered. So people always said, oh, you know, hairdressers make no money. <laughs> Lyndall, what's your answer what? to that? What? What's your answer to that question? Money unless you own your own business. Hmm? Hairdressers hey? don't make any money unless you own the business and you're a tight motherfucker. No, but hey, I'm by the way. I'm only having a joke, by the way. Hats off, because I know what it's like to own a business. Like I know the shit. I don't own the business, but I'm I deal with it in a management so role. I'd like, be. Can I tell you something, Mick? I'd be raking in the money if the government didn't buck my ass every fucking month. They well, rake me every month. Did you did you take advantage of all the COVID incentives that everyone else did with their employees? No, so I uh we're only two years in. We miss COVID. Ah, okay. Because every other company invested and took all the government money and we all worked the whole time and they they were getting paid our whole wage by the government, even though we were still working the whole time. Yeah, I think we uh missed everyone did it. Um four four like months, brother. Months, yeah. I think it was like which four is, months. We just which is it, it, that's but it's just pathetic. That they got away with that. That should have been our money, not the fucking boss's money. No. Yeah. No, we didn't do that. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that whole scheme was flawed from the beginning. And um, because, oh, don't get me wrong, if you did lose your job and you couldn't work, yes, it makes sense. But if you were working because you had to work and your boss was still claiming it, oof. Like, um, we do look after our workers. Um, the, um, well, the apprentice, because it's the first, she's the first year, she's only 16 years old. She gets paid $20 an hour, which is good for like, her. Which is pretty good for a 16 year old. But, um, the seniors that work for us, um, they get paid 40, 40, one gets paid $40 an hour. And the other one gets paid forty five bucks an hour. Is that um is that contract or wages? No wages. Wages. What? Full full time. Annual leave. Full time pay. annual leave sick pay. Sorry, sorry. Hang, hang on, hang on. Stop. Oh, are you paying someone forty five an hour on wages? Mm -hmm. Yeah, forty five bucks an hour, and then, and they get sick pay, holiday pay, annual leave, everything. Whoa, okay. Yeah, we look yeah, up, yeah. Um, one one gets the apprentice gets twenty bucks an hour. She's sixteen. She's right? sixteen. Um this other lady, Nita, she gets um forty dollars an hour. And um Jess manager. she's the manager, she gets forty five bucks an hour. Well, well, we but we look after him. Well, well, look, can, I look, can you teach me how to learn to cut hair? Because, you know, for what I do, um, I'm not on much more than that for what I do. Well, come down here, brother, if you... I'll put you through a course. You'd be right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I wash hair for, for fucking 50 bucks now? Dan gets paid four hundred dollars a week to do nothing except sit on YouTube and fix shit. <laughs> oh shit! Oh no, sorry. He makes a cup of teas and coffees and gives people chocolates as well. But like, he sits on YouTube all day and gets paid four hundred dollars to do so. Jesus! Isn't right, that like? So Chalupa needs to come up and discuss the beard concept because maybe that can be a new way of. of I'm dusting my clippers off and coming to work for you, Dan. I do a. Yeah, if you want to, you got to manage your beard. You know that could be Dan's new thing. If you can learn how to fucking trim beards, and Chalupa might be the one to teach it. Yeah, 
And then that's another side revenue. I've already told him that. I said, go for a barbering course. We could have you as a barber and get a barber chair and razors. And you could specialise in just men, men's beards. Because, you know, you know as well as I do, Dan, I can't grow a beard. And yeah. It's funny, brother. I never used to be able to grow a beard since I was younger, but now all of a sudden, I don't know, I can sort of grow one now. Yeah, well, I, can't, oh, I, can do, I can do about not even that. I can't even do that. I used to be like le heaps less than you, brother. I used to have the white bum fluff. I just kept shaving it. Now it's, I don't know. Like, I had to give it a trim the other day. Like, I was, um, Lindell goes, you need a shave. You're looking like a bad um, Australian bush bloke. Like yeah, but, mm. Yeah, you sort of look a bit, look, they definitely have got the out, a bit of the outlaw look going on there with the, mm. the bloody... Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's and it's look like depending on who you are, it could be intimidating, but yeah, not Dan and his eyebrows, not me, brother. His eyebrows go real long, too, like fucking antlers off his eyebrows. He's gonna fucking cut <laughs> the eyebrows off. But mm. serious, brother, if you're ever doing tough and they um, wherever you're living, right, won't renew your lease or blah, blah. And you need to um pack your bags and move out. Well, mate, you best be coming down this way. Come and live with us, buddy. Mm. In six months, we don't have a house yet. We don't have a green flight yet. I don't know, but we can work it out in the house and shit. That'll be all good. It's yeah, be well, good. you know. But, you know, I like fucking playing with Queensland and shit too much, mate, so. Heaps Can't leave. Work, heaps of work down here, brother. I know there is, but I just can't leave this. I can't leave this weather. It gets real hot down here. Not yeah, for hot. how many weeks? I don't know. Well, where we, me and Linda live, brother, it never really rains. Like, we'll forecast that it's rained because we live right on a point, right, near the water. It's like yeah. the bad weather that's that coming misses. it always misses it all the time like every time it'll say 90 percent chance rain today and hail and legit. we never get rain or hail or, or nothing it always misses it, us on the point like a kilometer from where we are that way it'll be pissing down like if we drive do you know what i mean a kilometer that way it's pissing down and hectic and then we drive to new home it's sunny and not raining one bit. We're like, what the heck? But where our house is, you walk like, what, 20 metres and you're on the lake? Like, I could literally... Why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it rain when we're like, you could walk... Literally 20 metres from a house is the fucking lake. Like, water. No, it's not 20 metres. 20 metres. 20 metres. Like, I can... I can see the water clear as day from when I walk out my door. Yeah. It doesn't rain either. Like, it, I could literally grab a rock and chuck it, brother, and nearly hit the water. Jesus. That's how but close. it doesn't rain. It's like we're in a point. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like it always weird, misses us for like some, some reason. It's a weird little point of the lake and it doesn't rain. Weird. Yes. Same thing Hi, here. Hi, Nick. Can you guys gotta go bear? Give me a minute. Yeah, all right, brother. I'm gonna grab one soon too. My lovely people in the chat, I'm sorry if I've missed anyone. Chalupa. Chalupa. Dan walks around all day shaking his monkey maker for all the old birds. He's your Chalupa. They all love me, mate. Because I am who I am. I'm beautiful to everyone. Lovely CJ said, Danny's grandma, okay. Yeah, no, she's all right now, lovely. She's a heaps better now. She's had the kids for four days. Australian Brady Bunch. It sure is, Ian. 
JD the legend. Still in the house. Love you, brother JD. Drop your link, JD, brother, and everyone else if you want to. Awesome seeing all you beautiful, lovely people. Seriously? Thanks for popping on the Aussie show at the moment. Oof. She smooth. JD. No, I could hear um like behind me head. I'm like, what the heck's that sound? And we've got this um we've got this speaker here and it must have been um must have been turned on a little bit. <clears throat> It was turned on and it was gone. So what, Jody? Is it six hundred now? Pardon, brother. Jody is six. It's six hundred subscribers. Yeah, that's mad. The other day, I, I think I've seen in the daytime before I went to work. I think you had like three. 380 or something yeah, like last was. week or something like that that's mad well done jd my brother yeah he's been pushing out the hours he's definitely mm -hmm. been fucking hard well done jd brother because you only need um 500 um subscribers and four thousand watch hours to get monetized where before you um had to have a thousand subscribers, like when when I got monetized, I had to have a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours, and then YouTube changed it. Because you, you'd be close, Amy, to five hundred, aren't you? No, mate, not me. Nothing. No, I don't. I don't go. I don't do anything on my channel. No. No, you and Jess. Uh, not sure. I, I'm not sure. I have to ask Jess what her things are. I don't check on social media, bro. I don't have any social media. So. Well, because I don't get pushed. You're the same as me. I don't have social. Well, I don't have Facebook or Instagram or anything. But Lynn will. Lynn will put, like, um, Facebook and Instagram for the business account. Yep. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um, she doesn't have a personal one. And then I just I just have YouTube. That's the only thing I've have. I just go on YouTube. Yeah. Well, I you dog shit, but when you have a business when you have a business you've gotta have it and all the shit and that whatever. No. Yeah, fair enough. Makes sense. But you know what? Ninety percent of my business comes from word of mouth, not not social media. Well, that's right, yeah. Especially in your business, yes. 
Like literally, I probably get what five people a year off social media that come into the salon. Everyone else is a friend of a friend or a sister of a brother of a cousin that comes in. Like I don't have that social media. I don't. It's bullshit. And also, um, sometimes I walk around and do um letterbox drops rather like with our flyers. Um, flyers. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I walk walk for kilometers and kilometers, brother, probably like three hundred kilometers, dropping the good old flies. Ah, uh, see, so and you pay. Yeah. That week. That week you only pay. It's <laughs> <laughs> good to see you and your fucking money cut. That's good. But if you ever get Tigger up there, brother, you know where you got to come. You'd be yeah, what, what do you want me to do? What do you, look, look, I've had experience in shearing sheep, but I you know, probably not much more than that. So, Well, if you come down and live with us, brother, I'd just um, start a landscaping business again. And I'd, mm. um, I'd go, all right, well, um, Jess, Linda would go, all right, well, come on, Jess, she's going to teach her to be a hairdresser. And they'd just do their thing at the salon. And I'll just start up landscaping business again. Well, he, he gave up I, his landscaping business and we bought the salon. I can't imagine. Um, that's what I, I was doing, Mick. I was landscaping and then I'll give that up and then we bought the salon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But right you'd be on. <laughs> real good money if you decided, do you know well, what I mean? Is hard work. It's odd, mate. Hard. I. I know where the money is. Don't worry about that. I I see it every day with my boss. Like I know where the money is. Don't get wrong. You know I I know where it's at. But I got to deal with. Or, um, if not um landscaping, um I used to be a um tree lopper. I'd probably do tree lopping. More money. Like tree mm. lopping, you make heaps yeah. more money than that, landscaping. That, that is probably an easy avenue, yeah, because you don't got to worry about pleasing people. You just got to cut the tree down. Yeah. So you're not trying to make someone's life better by getting, mm, how's your garden look? Oh, I'm not happy with it. Yeah. Everyone's yeah, open to interpretation of what they want. And so, you know, if you can cut the tree down, they're happy. Yeah, definitely. That's probably what yeah. I'd definitely go back to is tree lop umbrella. Yeah. So with us, all they want with us is, um, which is constant and is, you know, some people are ridiculous. Um, especially over this period of being on call over Christmas, like people have been asking ridiculous things that don't even need to be addressed until we can come back to work. Like seriously, yeah. you got your tap dripping. No, we're not coming to that. If you got a major yeah. issue. Yes, we will, and you're gonna you're gonna pay for it. Um, but we don't do just wine shit. Like she's basically the washers are probably health and gone safety in their issues or nothing. Yeah, the washers are probably gone in their tap and it's making it drip. Or um, yeah, unless yeah, or the spindle's worn out and yeah, needs a new spindle or. Yeah, well, yeah, a lot of things. But um, yeah. it was funny with um, some of the things that 41 was saying about guys making money off YouTube doing plumbing videos, of saying things and of showing things that we deal with. And I could, yeah, a, but mate, I don't have time. Like, I'm not that tech savvy. I'd love to do it, but, I'm, you know, I don't have time. And at so, times when hectic um, stuff happens, if you pulled your phone out, it'd probably get water damage and you, do you know what damage. I mean? Yeah, or water or shit damage, and you, yeah, you'd lose your phone. Or at times you probably think, oh no, I'll just keep my phone in my pocket. Well, no, so what? If, if look, if only a wish I had a film, what Tulip just said, if I had a film that, um, 
and all I did was take photos of what happened that day. But if I'd have filmed it uh, with a GoPro or something, um, yeah, no one would have believed it. But we've got it all back up. But it would have been awesome. Like it would that would have been like no, no one's going to believe me. They're like, "Fuck what? There's no way in <laughs> hell." But it did. Yeah, that's crazy. And the worst part was the pipe that was in was galvanized steel. So they, normally they're either PVC or um, copper in the old state. But because it's galvanized steel, you can't just cut through it easily. So I was had to use a hacksaw, sorry, a saber saw, or whatever the Americans call it, whatever you call it. So I had to cut through it below where the snake's tail was to make sure we didn't cut the fucking snake's tail off. And um, pulled the whole thing out in one piece with the snake still in there. And, um, yeah, it was pretty cool because he couldn't get out. He was stuck. So, <laughs> And you couldn't cut. So you, could, you couldn't because it was inside of a – so the trap, that it, the S-trap it was caught in was made of brass. Obviously, brass is heavy. You know, heavy back in the day, it was heavy metal. And yeah. you can't cut through that with a grinder without injuring anything inside of it. And so they had just – they had to set it inside a dark room and let it do its own thing. Let yeah, it lose I'm weight. Think it was, and yeah, they left it in a dark room, put the fucking thing in a dark room, and let it lose its weight, and then eventually it managed to work its way out. So because it lost you, the weight, you know what whatever the snake it was, it's a python. No, yeah, so it was harmless, wouldn't got hurt anyone, but it just gone mm-hmm. in there for whatever smell, water, I don't know, but it went in there. Um. It was, yeah, it was crazy. It was fucking awesome. Yeah, that's, that is crazy. And it doesn't matter if it's a python or not. Like, if people aren't used to well, snakes, any snake can, you know what I mean, freak out anyone. It's sort of like um, spiders, do you know what I mean? Like, oh, spiders, yeah. Spiders, eh? Like, any spider, I'll just get me thong and smack it, eh? Well, how about this? So we did a job out at Matt Elliott out of the road here, which is, oh, I don't know, a couple of k's north. Anyway, so we put we had to put a new septic tank in. We've pulled the, the old mate had this old septic tank, which is poly. It was a poly, poly, polyethylene septic tank sitting there for four years. We got out there. I lifted the fucking thing up with a excavator, pulled the tank up, and there was two, which Jess has seen this, there was two of these giant Australian tarantulas. I've never seen them in my life, but there was two of these giant Australian fucking tarantulas underneath the septic tank, and um, they were not, you know, not going to try and attack you, but they were massive, mate. And I'm like, and I'm like, well, I didn't realize they were even. I didn't even realize they were here in Queensland, but they are. And um, yeah, like no shit. You try and hit this thing. Oh, we didn't. We let. It, we trying to shovel them away, get them away from. Otherwise, they would, we would have driven over them with an excavator and killed them. Yeah. So he fucking shoved them off. Get in. Like, just try to get them away because no one wants to kill something so rare because you, you just don't see them. Sh- we shoved them off. Anyway, when we're digging the old one out, we found another two of them on the outlet of the old one. Another two come out of the ground and um, same situation. Try and fucking get them, get, you know, shoo them off because... Again, yeah, they're crazy. rare. Very rare. You don't – the only time I've ever seen them was when we had the floods here in 2019 at my sister's place. When we had the floods, the water washed up so high, it pushed one of them up into her house and one of them ended up in their fucking laundry and um, in the washing clothes. And I – actually, she sent me fo- – she took – they caught it and sent me photos and like, what do I do with this? I'm like, catch it, do not, you know, just catch it. So they caught it, put it on Facebook. Some leading fucking expert of spiders came out, picked it up, said, oh, she's a beautiful female. So they took it back to wherever they were going. So basically, long story short, in those particular spiders, which I'm pretty sure they call a whistling spider, um, you don't, yeah, you got to protect them, mate. Like, you don't fucking kill shit like that. Yeah. Um, you know, white tip in South Australia, white tip spiders, yeah, yeah, yeah knock yeah. them on the head because if they bite yeah. you, you're fucked. 
Yeah, we're they're, gonna... they're, they're about this big. They're about as big as your fucking fingernail. I know that will kill you. But the other night we had a um, white tail spider in our room, and I um, got the yeah, they're dangerous. And... Get rid of that guys. Yeah, sprayed him with a fly spray. Psh, and killed it. Yeah, no, mate. They'll they'll fucking cause organ failure. They'll rot all your skin. Bad motherfuckers. They are bad. So it's funny, eh? Dan, something so small like we just described can cause so much degradation yeah. to not your health, but these big ones, you know, they'll run away. They're, they're, they're not, they don't want to fight. They just want to, they just want to live their own life. You know, they're, they're not like interested. They, um, hunting Leave me alone. Sort of like a huntsman spider, they harmless. They'll leave yeah, people yeah. alone, but if you yeah. stir them up, they'll they will go for you. And that um, tarantulas, they remind me of you know like a bird bird eating spider. That's what they are, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Well, they're called Australian bird eating spider, but they're also called a whistling spider because they make sounds like. They will yeah. whistle, yeah. Yeah, and they do that to call, like, the females. Correct, yep. And they're the size of, um, like, a, a tea. Um, oh, um, mate, they're fucking like, fangs are the size of your fucking finger. Yeah. Like your fingernail. Yeah, like, their, thing, their fangs are, like, probably... I think the only worst, the worst one would have to be the Sydney funnel web. That would have to be the worst spider you could ever come across because that motherfucker, if you go near it, it wants to go you. Like, it's not scared. It wants to fucking bite you. It doesn't matter what you do, where you meet it, it gets angry and it wants to fucking attack the fuck out of it. And those things are nasty. They'll chase you down the fucking garden, mate. They'll yeah, chase you out. The the um, spider in Australia. Well, as soon as you go near them, they um rear up on their back legs, and they, but like, they'll be just so they're on the ground, right? If you go near them, they'll rear up on their back legs with their fangs hanging like that, and if mm. you go near them, they'll just go, and yeah, like lunge their whole yeah. body forward. Yeah. Like, Does it sound yeah. like it misses? But yeah. <laughs> I'm only joking. Yeah. I'm only. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Linda so went basically, in, anyway, apart Linda, from spot, Linda went and laid in bed. So a good mate of mine, um, who Graham Rustry, that I grew up when when I was. Uh, in high school, in a sorry, in primary school, in a hell of a environment, and all we had was eleven kids, oh, uh, twelve kids maybe, at primary school in Hallop, in Hallop, South Australia. If anyone wants to read up, the school's closed down, so that's where I did my primary school. And one of the guys, Graham, who I went to school with, went to a red eye one night and went to bed blind drunk. As you all did at a rodeo, 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 however you want to call it. Gone to bed in his swag. A fucking Eastern Brown jumped into his swag while he's asleep and bit him on the leg and turned him into a vegetable. Freaking hell. So he That's didn't cool. die. He didn't die. He was on the brink of death, but they got him out, got him to the hospital, but he turned into a vegetable. Just to give you an idea of what those things can do. So, yeah. He, um, yeah, that, that was turned him into just a veggie. So, that's crazy, eh? Yep. Grew up with him, spent time at school. All he was doing was laying in bed at night and it went into his swag for warmth and he moved and it bit him. Poor bugger. And obviously, because he was fucking full of piss. He didn't move. He just kept sleeping. And by the time they found him, it was too late. He'd already coagulated his blood. It fucked, it fucked his immune system. Fucked everything. It, yeah, so he was 
basically laying there was a potato. Poor so, brother. That's yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and I, I've seen his sister who, um, since actually a long, well, 10 years ago, I, I saw her after the, well, it was five years after the incident, but I saw her 10 years ago, and um, yeah, it, it, it was, yeah, it was, it's hard, you know, but yeah, it definitely would be the Australian, okay. you know, the thing when you live in Australia, mate, you deal with this shit, like you can go and hang out and do what you want to do in the outback and go to bed at night in, in a swag. But mm, you take the risk, you know what I mean? Like, take the and, risk of fun. And definitely, like, um, where, wherever you you got to be careful where you camp in Australia because there's, that, there's some spots in Australia where there's that many deadly snakes and, like you said, Bella, that – will come up and sliver into your tent and like there's places in Australia where you can just be sitting there like I watched someone on YouTube in Australia they were sitting um I'm not quite sure exactly where it was but it looked like they were sitting like on on a desert like um or, like orange red sand and then all of a sudden they're making a video then um a uh, red belly brown snake crawled up the bloke's pants and um, bit him on his Johnson. And then he's jumping up and down, and the, he's passed the phone to this girl. And the girl didn't know what was going on. And she's like, You were right, you were right. And then he's like, Ah, ah, ah. And then he's pulled up his pants, right, and fucking pulled out this brown snake. And like started smacking it on the ground and killed it, and then threw it away. But then he's like, "Call the, take me to the hospital." And then they, she, um, and this other bloke like carried him to the car because he started walking. But then he started going all like funny and weird. Mm. And the guy and the girl put him in the car, in this full drive, and they yeah started taking him to the hospital i'm like fuck and then at the end of the film you see because it bit him on the penis right i don't mm. know why he did it but he took a picture of his penis in the hospital and legit his penis was like that fat and i was like fuck like but swollen like i was like you're kidding that's insane yeah. We all wish we all wish we had that. But wish yeah, Dan. So we had that, but not from that. But I know. I'm only joking, mate. No, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, if we had that, we'd. Be... <laughs> oh. Yes. Well, actually, if we had that, we'd probably get um have a bit of trouble. Even if you put lube there, we'd still have trouble. Well, it wouldn't matter. Eh? Wouldn't matter. Eh? <laughs> Fuck that. But yeah, no. Definitely we have no. It's uh you know, we're a safe country. You wanna come in, mm-hmm. play the game, then if you don't even know what you're doing or what you're talking about, then you're gonna fucking die. Pretty fucking simple. Mm-hmm. There's no bottom line to that. And um the last um two nights like I've um made like Lindell dinner and that and then I said, oh, what are you doing, bud? What are you watching on TV? And um, for the last two nights, she's been hooked on. I don't know if you've seen it um, on TV or not. Or I'm pretty sure it was on an episode on Netflix or something. And a good um, it's a ghost, a ghost channel, Australian ghost channel, Australian ghost hunters. And they um, hunt for ghosts in Australia. And what I watched from it, they were doing a thing in Melbourne. And, yeah, they were they did sort of find a couple of things. But then they travelled around to other parts of Australia. And then the last one I watched, and before that, before this one, right, these 
there's six um, people, right, and there's, like, real big men, and they go in, right, and they're like, come on, what, the ghost, come and test me. Come and run me out of this place. I dare you to, and, like, being, like, do you know what I mean? Like, trying to egg on the ghost to attack them. Yeah. Then, then um, nothing happened because before that they did that, right, one of their, like, nerdy friends walked into the house, and I reckon it was a bit played on. Yeah, maybe. A they nice. reckon the ghost went into him and yeah. um, he's spazzing out, right, so they took him out of that house and um, they wouldn't let him back in. And then after they took him out, they've walked into the house and they're, like, sort of telling the ghost to come and attack them. But then nothing happened. But then they went to... um. I watched the next the um, next episode the next day because um, I asked Linda what she was watching. She's like, oh, no, I'm still watching the Australian Ghost Hunters. I'm like, all right, yep, sweet, I'll make me dinner watching. And um, apparently it's the worst ghost place in Australia that they've found out because it's – I'm pretty sure it was um, episode 11 and they've been to Melbourne, all over Australia, right? And they went to um, the episode 11. It was called um, Cock Cockatoo Island in Sydney. And it's a little island that the ships used to port into off um, Sydney Harbour. And it was built back in 1880-something. Anyway, they went there, right? And they, before they even went into the the place, right, the big men that were hectic before the the last season when they tried to challenge the ghost and all that, apparently back in the day, right, um, the caretaker that lived at the house um, ended up getting murdered and all this stuff and then um, the wife ended up staying there and um, she ended up getting murdered herself but the wife ended up um, being, like, possessed and she ran this certain house on that island and who, whoever would come by that house, she would dead set attack him and physically push him, like hectic, push him out the house and even pick him up off the ground and throw him out the house. <laughs> anyway, um, that was, like, from people, like, Back in the day, workers would go there to do maintenance on the house, right? Mm -hmm. And they'd walk in, and this is all stories told before they even went there. Um, maintenance folks would go in to do, say, painting or um, changing the carpet or anything in that house. The ghost would dead set push them out the room wherever they were and throw them out the house. And they're like, no, nah, no, nah, this is not going to happen. Do you know what I mean? These like real big men. Mm. Like they weren't even worried. And all these other episodes I watched before that, they're challenging the ghost and that. But anyway, when they went to Cockatoo Island, they walked in the house. You should have seen the way they were when they first stepped in the door. They were like full. They are all different sidekicks from America, Australia, um, Philippines, all there. And you should have seen them, brother. They full shat themselves when they first walked in the door. I was like, wow, do you know what I mean? From watching all the other episodes. And um, it was, like, crazy insane. Like, they were that afraid to um, challenge the ghost at Cockatoo Island because they knew something was so bad there. And they put their shit down and they're like, okay, um, if you don't want me here, please give me a sign and three, give me three bips now and we'll leave. And then the two big men, right, done that and a couple other things, and they shit themselves and went, they left. And this other um, big sidekick dude walked in and, um, he walked in this room and he started bawling down, crying his eyes out. He goes, this room makes me feel so sad. And then he's like got grabbed and then he's screaming and then 
like he was the big head honcho out of all of them. And then he's like, I'm just going to go. And then I'm like, fuck. It was was way hectic more than what I'm saying about it. Like I've only seen um, snippets about it. But, yeah, a little bit that I watched the episode before. Yeah, so what's what's that on? Um, it's called Aussie Ghost Hunters. Okay. Yeah, well, on Netflix or? Yeah, but was it on Netflix, Bob, or what channel was it on? It's um, on Haunt TV. Oh, okay. Yeah, Haunt TV Australia. And, yeah, it's interesting, like crazy. Even these um, seagulls are going down, attacking them and everything. Jesus. Like, it was crazy. I'm like, what the heck? Well, I'm gonna get, I have to get a beer to get over that concept. Yeah, Cockatoo Island in Sydney, brother. If you Google it about ghosts, Cockatoo Island, yeah. that's the most um, hectic ghost um, thing in the whole of Australia. And there, um, people have studied in Australia from Melbourne, Perth, all of, over Australia. They did have snippets of, he- like, a little bit of, like, hectic stuff. But when they went to Cockatoo Island, that was, like, going into a different realm of things. Like, they had hectic, evil, like, they shit themselves. They... I watched other episodes, right, where they would stay in the house overnight and, do you know what I mean, stay there for days. The episode when they went to that Cockatoo Island, they were probably only in that house for 20 minutes, well, not even that. Shit mm. themselves and all ran out. It was that hectic and bad, brother. I'm like, far oh, out. Yeah. yeah. And they yeah. used to want them, apparently they used to bring arm. Um, all slaves there um, back in the, what, 1880s. 1880s. They used to bring all slaves and... There's yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of mystery around everything, eh? Yeah. Like about bullshit. Um, look, and and I, I don't know what to believe or not, but, yeah. And I don't, like, normally get into that type of thing, but, yeah, Linda liked that stuff and she... Gets into it and stuff like that. Yeah, well, I've got one. I've got one if CJ wants to hear it. So. We're going to do go to the toilet, brother. I'll be back in one sec. Yeah, so am I. Catch you later. Mm. Uh, yeah. The outlaw said, these are real, CJ. Lovely, CJ said, laugh out loud, you're going to get me into trouble or yelled at again, outlaw. Outlaw, laugh out loud, I have a few I've heard about. Anybody have... A uh, bin chicken ghost story. Ghost EpiPen. <laughs> Just said, laugh out loud, Hooper. 
Oz even has poisonous ghosts. And yeah, bad ghosts, they do. Like from what I've been watching, crazy. Mick, tell us your ghost story next. Like even um I'll tell you another ghost story which I've witnessed and seen myself. Um before me and Lyndall bought this house, we um rented a house at Buff Point for four years and where the lounge was the tv was against the wall and to the left of the tv there was um a door that with um there was a door and beside that there was like a hallway anyway every night that me and linda would sit down and watch the tv we'd always see something out the left left side of our like, eye, but someone, and we always had the feeling someone was watching us, right? And we'd always see like a figure standing like in the hallway, like they were peeking their head around watching me and Linda watch TV. And every time we looked at it, it, it wasn't there. Anyway, um, we're sitting there one night, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm just saying things. I, I didn't really believe anything, right? But anyway, our son that was in the room that ran off that hallway started um, talking in his sleep when he was in there by himself, um, talking to someone. The man and Linda was sitting on the lounge going, who the heck's he talking to? He's full having a converse conversation with someone, like someone's in his room. So Lyndall goes, oh, I'm not getting up. You go in and check him. So I walked in there. I turned the light on and I said, oh, Brave, who are you talking to? He goes, um, I'm talking to um, Bad Ryan. I said, oh, who's Bad Ryan? He goes, I don't know, Dad. I've never seen him before. I went, well, where's Bad Ryan? He goes, he's right there. And he pointed in the corner of the room. And I looked and I went, no, nah, mate, there's no one there. I said, where is he? He goes, Daddy, he just ran past me and jumped out the window. And I went, oh, that was weird. And I went, it's all right, mate, just go and lay down and go to sleep. Anyway, a week after that, right, we're sitting on the lounge and the kitchen light, well, the kitchen is behind the lounge, right, and the TV's in front. Um, the kitchen light was on and we had the house had big tiles on the floor, right? Anyway, me and Linda were sitting watching the TV and this figure walked behind the lounge, behind me and Linda, and Linda was like, did you just see that shadow across the floor? Someone's walked behind us. And I've looked and went, nah, you Carrying on, you're going on about things. I didn't see a shadow. She's like, I did set scene. I don't know if it was a man or a little boy, some shadow. And the go and check are the kids are the kids up. And I went and checked, right? I went to all their rooms. I'm like, come back to Linda. I'm like, no, nah, they're all still asleep. She goes, dead set. I fully seen a shadow, like someone was standing behind the lounge while we're sitting there, and their shadows <laughs> come on the floor in front of us. And then I went, no, no, it's all good. Then anyway, I still didn't believe in it, right? Anyway, um, the next day after that, me, me and Linda, it was about nine o'clock at night, me and Linda were watching the TV. Then all of a sudden, I, um, cause I always got the vibe, but every time I'd look right, I always look at the corner of my eye, like some, I'm always, was um, along the hallway, which we looked where the TV was straight ahead. There was a little door there that run, run there was a hallway, but always on the left-hand side, I always seen someone when I would look at the TV, something there, always peeking. But every time I'd look, there'd be nothing there. Anyway, 
me and Linda were sitting watching TV and she's like all of a sudden like freaked out and she's like, <gasps> did you see that? And I'm like, no, nah, no. Nah. She goes, I dead set seen two little boys sitting, standing at the door looking right. She goes, one was about five years old and one was a bit older and one um, looked see-through and he had a shirt on and it had like a little monkey on his shirt. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I still didn't sort of believe it, but I, I always seen something out the cor corner of my eye, right? Anyway, my mum ended up coming down a week after all this started going on. And my mum's sort of spiritual, right? She believes in ghosts and shit, shit like that, right? Anyway, my mum's come down. Um, How's this? Even before my mum come down, I went, fuck this, because I'm seeing shit out the corner of my eye every time I look. I, shit disappears. And I said, I don't know what to believe. And Linda was saying, I dead set seeing a shadow. There's a fucking someone walking behind us. I've seen little boys fucking peeking behind the door looking at us with a monkey shirt and explaining how they are and what they look like, right? And I'm like, all right, fuck this. I'm going to set up. Um, I'm going to get my phone and put my phone there and record all night. Then I checked my phone. Wouldn't The next day I wouldn't catch shit. Linda was like, did you hear that? And I'd get up and look around the whole house even of a night. Would never still catch nothing, right? So I was a bit still hiffy about the whole thing. I knew I'd seen sort of shit out the corner of my eye, but every time I looked, do you know what I mean? I didn't know really what to believe. Anyway, my mum come down a week after all this shit started happening, right? We said to me mum, we didn't tell her about the ghost or anything. Anyway, I said to me, well, I said to me mum, me and Linda um, are going to go to the club. Is that all right, mum? We're going to go and have a few drinks. And it's right if you watch the kids. Anyway, mum went, yeah, no, it's all right. I haven't seen the kids in a while. Um, you go and have fun and you just come home when you just want to come home. And I'm like, all right, thanks heaps, mum. It's dead set honest, truthful. I didn't tell me mum about nothing, about us seeing ghosts and fucking shit out the corner of my eye and Lyndall seeing two little boys staring at her and what the little kids were wearing and Braith was talking to one of them boys in the room and that, right? I didn't say shit, nothing to me, Mum. Anyway, how's this? And I've never seen my mum. Swear to God, cross my heart, I hope to die. I dead set being truthful and honest. How's this? Me and Lynn will come home at dark, right? Open the door. Anyway, bef I'll explain it. Before I open the door, we had this back door, right? And it had like three massive doors in one, right? So you'd uh, no, sorry, four. The back door had four doors, right? So you'd, it'd be the middle door, right? And you'd open the middle door and it'd go to the other two doors and then you'd push them other two doors and it'd be it'd open like a massive door, like a huge door. But anyway, all of them were closed, shut, locked. They had a, a blinds like this behind me now going all the way across the whole back door right anyway how's this soon as me and um linda walked in from getting home from the club i walked inside opened the door my mum because my mum i know my mum's spiritual and that and she's experienced shit in her life right and my mum's never been scared of ghosts or anything but as soon as i walked in open the door my mum's face right was that pale white she's like Oh, and I'm like, you all right, Mum? What's going on? And she couldn't speak for a bit, right? And then all of a sudden, how's this? The blinds, and I even um, got footage of it, and I, I put it on my YouTube. If you go on my YouTube and look way back, you'll see I oh, dead set posted it. How's this, right? You see the blinds? The blinds are dead set still. There's no wind at all. The blinds start swaying like this. No, how's this? Before we walked in, right? Mum goes, she was white, right? As a ghost. Mum goes, can you can you hear something? We go, no. What do you? I go, no, mum. What are you going on about? She goes, I can hear real old music playing. And I, oh, I had a few to drink, right? I'm like, no, nah, mum, I can't hear nothing playing. She goes, 
Walking Dead said here. She goes, Dan, I've been hearing tunes play 10 minutes, old tunes play 10 minutes before you and Linda walked in the door. And then she goes, I felt this big cold chill go over me and I could hear people talking. I went and checked your kids. No one, the ki- your kids were asleep. But she goes, as soon as I walked back in into the lounge room, I looked at your blinds and your blinds were dead set, swaying, fucking hectic. Right? And I went, nah, mum, I think you're tripping, eh? Like, I, I, I didn't believe me, mum, right? But how's this? As I said that to me, mum, I looked at the blinds. The blinds were dead set still, right? The blinds started going fucking hectic crazy for, like, probably over a minute, right? Side to side, side to side, and then this is what got me, right? They went from side to side, side to side, then they dead set fucking... We're going quick and then the, the whole, like, blinds, right? Then it went from that to dead set, stop and still. Then the blinds went from over over here, open, like someone's got the blind and went like that and opened the blind up, dead set looking out outside. Then you see it go shut, like, real slow, but it was two spots. Do you know what I mean? Like, how long the blind was, it's like, from one side to the other side, it's probably eight foot long in the video. Do you know what I mean? From one end of the vertical blinds to the other side is dead set eight foot long. So no person can stand at one side and open the blind up and the other side at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Looking at the backyard. But then when you watch the video, brother, you see this orb fly, right? My mum had her jacket on the seat. You see an orb fly and land on me mum's jacket. And then that's when I started sort of believing. I'm like, fuck, I'm fucking trying to catch shit in this house for months because I knew shit was going on. And then anyway, right, me mum um, ended up going to bed that night. Right? And I kept thinking, I'm like, fuck, and what the heck? Then anyway, here's this. The next morning, my mum goes to me, I'm not going to um, come down and stay here anymore. I'm like, you all right, mum? What's wrong? She goes, you know me, son. Look at me necklace. I've got a me gold necklace with a, a cross on it. She goes, my whole life, before I go to bed, I take me necklace off and I sit it um, right beside me before I go to sleep. She goes, when I woke up this morning, I went to get me necklace. My necklace wasn't on the beside me. She goes and just nodded her head like this, right, being honest. And I'm like, what, mum? She goes, oh, just tell me it's all good, mum. She goes, my necklace wasn't sitting beside my bed. I'm like, well, where was it, mum? She goes, when I opened my eyes, it was across the room in the corner, halfway up the wall just hanging there. With nothing there, no nail, no nothing. She goes, when I looked and spotted where my necklace was, she goes, it just fucking dropped off the wall into the corner of the room. And then she said, I just went to the corner room, picked my necklace up, and she goes, I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm not staying here anymore. <coughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. And then um, I said to Linda, right, because it started fucking peeking me out, right, um... We've got, we've got to move. I don't want to stay here anymore. And she's like, oh, fuck me. And I didn't want to stay there anymore either. And then that's when we moved from there and bought this out. But I didn't believe it until I witnessed that own shit myself. And then me mum, do you know what I mean? Like, it was crazy. Even a few times um, also, I went to, um when we were living at that house, I went to walk to the toilet, right, and a few times it's like someone was standing behind the toilet and shut the door. Yeah, there was a window in the bathroom right of the toilet, but the window was dead, dead set shut. There's not enough wind. No wind could get through the toilet <clears> to shut <throat> the door. It happened to me two times living there in four years. And I thought one of the kids were behind the doors. Do you know what I mean? Hiding in the bathroom. And I never said nothing to Lyndall about it, but, yeah, I went to go there into the toilet, hang a piss, and the dog would go bang and 
chat in my face. I'm like, who the fuck's in the toilet? I'd look and go, what the fuck? It was crazy, brother. Hmm. So, Jess, I'm not quite so sure what you're talking about, but... Um... Yeah, because I've been been there, not quite the extent that Dan has, but I've been in that same situation, but not as bad. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but your face is crackling. Because um, I believe what he's saying. Because I've been. Okay. <clears throat> no one said they didn't believe. Yeah. No, I I get it. I get it. And if you've seen it for your own eyes, do you know what I mean? And mm. shit like you, yeah, will. Well, if you don't believe, do you know what I mean? You know that there's something that no human can do. So there's well, it's, it's yeah, it's yeah. not about not believing, but exactly what you just said. There's no way in hell that there's no way in hell what happened to me can be achieved by a human. There's no way. No, you can't. can't. Yeah, you can't dodge it up and yeah. Yeah, you can be a child and be young and be, but you know, let's be honest. Most children are pretty fucking. Pretty smart, so mm. you work shit out pretty quick. Children are innocent and perceptive. So it's when you work out that something doesn't add up and something happens, different story to you, obviously, Dan, when you're growing up. But even as a child, when something goes on, when yeah, you get and it even um, got that something bad too, playing that games, happened. and you know, you know that the place is not safe, and you've been told that uh, no, you, this place has had. Um, instances of of uh, foul play when it comes to spiritual things. And when don't get me wrong, mother. Like I think we were there probably a year after me mum left, right, and didn't come back. And then a year after that, that's when we bought this house. But in that year, brother, you even asked Lindell. We'd be laying in bed. I'd be asleep, right? Linda would wake me up because she'd hear shit, right? She'd be fucking shit in her pants. She'd wake me up to go and walk the house and see what's going on. And being honest to myself, um, because I knew shit was going on, right? And what made it more scarier towards me, being honest and being, like, truthful, was the house was a big house. Do you know what I mean? It was like a, yeah, it was a big yeah. ass fella. And yeah. I don't know, like, I'm not sad to say it, but at times, brother, I was scared, but I didn't show Lyndall that I was scared. Inside, I was scared, but I had to go and face whatever I had to face to be a man because I knew I had kids in the house. Yeah, and Dan, the funny thing is about that, you know, the fun, you know, we're like, oh, you know, we're blokes. You know, you want to fucking, someone wants to play around with your family or someone's a fucking, like, drama you had or anyone. You know, you want to be a man, we'll deal with it. But when you're dealing with something like that, that you don't even know what the yeah. fuck you're dealing with, you're like, oh, you can't do nothing, brother. What like, is it's yeah. What is this? Like, is it real or are we being pranked or is this actually real? You know, that's the fucking scary part. Well, whatever's going on at that house, brother, it's dead set real and, Oof. yeah. Crazy. No, I know we, I know what you're talking about, mate. But I haven't dealt with that exact experience. But yeah, definitely been very similar. Um, especially in the town I grew up with. Just yeah, back in uh, Borough, which mm, anyone wants to research it, I'm sure if anyone is here, no one here. And, really and also, right here, this me, right? Um, the next door, we talked to the next door lady at the time that we um, when we were living there, right? After all this shit started happening, right? Yep. Um, because the room that my mum stayed in, right? She goes, I don't know, it felt so cold. Um, there's something about that room, and that's where the shit happened in that room, right? And she goes, that's where it's coming from, that room. And I'm like, all right, mum, this and that. How's this? This is another thing that I forgot to say too. After my mum went, probably about two weeks later, right, we're talking to our next door neighbour. And Dad said, how's this? We told her, right, and she's like, there's one way that I can um, tell you, love, that, that you can do to see if there's something. Because um, I told her what my mum said. There's something about, about about that room, and that's where they're coming from, the room that my mum stayed in. 
She's like, I'll tell you what you can do, love, and this will dead set give you a dead set sign that there's something going on in that room. She goes, well, I can do it for you right now. Me and Lyndall, Lyndall's looked at me and I looked at her and went, what's this old lady up to, right? And how's this problem? She goes, hang on a minute, I'll walk in me. She goes, I'll be back in a minute. She's walked into her, her house, right? And Lyndall's looking at me and I'm, I'm thinking, what the fuck's she going to get, like some wand or some spiritual thing or something, right? How's this, brother? This old lady come back out with a cat. She goes, here's me cat. You walk in that room with my cat now. Oh, and shit. Not, dead really? Set, this, yeah, dead set, brother. I swear to God, this old lady goes, you walk into that room with my cat right now, and if my cat can stay in your arms happy as days and doesn't want to get the fuck out of that room, she goes, there's nothing wrong with that room. But she goes, if that cat... Don't want to be in that house. She goes, there's something bad in there and your mother's right. So anyway, I'm like, all right, well, I didn't know what to believe, right? So I'll grab this fucking cat. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. Brother, yeah. I'll grab this cat, right? Because I tried to fucking trying to work out what the fuck's going on and shit. So anyway, I, I walked inside the I've walked into the lounge room, right? The cat was still all fine. So I'm patting the cat. As soon as I um Walked into that um, hallway, right, off where I kept seeing people staring at the corner. The cat started going a little bit like, it started going, meow, meow, right, just as I first walked in there, right. So I went, oh, good, pussy, pussy, right. Anyway, dead set. I've walked up to the fucking room that my mum was in. This cat fucking went ballistic, brother. Ask Lyndall next time you talk to her, right? This cat went fucking like it's getting murdered. What fucking, I had to drop the cat. The fucking cat ran out the house 100 miles an hour, brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, fuck, and Lyndall's like, oh, fucking what the fuck? Yeah, 100%. No, I, I totally agree. With what you're saying, hundred percent. It was crazy. Yeah. Now my story is not a, not as a, intense as that, but um, yeah, I'll just get a beer and and then we'll talk about it. Like I say I don't normally like talk about things about my experiences because that's who I am. But I, I definitely I'll definitely share it. But um, I'm not somebody you know don't normally talk about. Personal things, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely share. The, it's not like I said, that's my yours. Nothing is as good as yours, but well, no, you're right. good. that's my like ghost experience. Being I just don't like going into it because it's fucking. It just reassures the fact that you know there is shit going on. And there definitely is, brother. Yeah. Don't think there is. There definitely is. I, I, my Make personal. Sure. And here I am looking at my back now, going fucking what what? The I curtain love the <laughs> Yeah. I'm just going to yeah. quickly have a smoke, brother. Yeah, me too. Oh. Yeah, no. I'll be back in two minutes. Oh, what? Me and Mick are going for a smoke, and then you'll be able to hear Mick's story. But Dad said I'm being truthful and honest. That's what I've experienced to do with Ghost and even us, Lyndall. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's a lot, heaps more hectic. Um, in person, than what I explained it oh definitely. Mm. And I was thinking, even like a few weeks ago, I wouldn't mind getting my phone right and going back to that house, filming it, knock on the door, and I want to hear the people that live there now their experiences from the house because I guarantee you. They'd probably say the same what I have, if not probably more hectic. I don't know, but they they would definitely experience what what me and Lynn will have definitely. But I'm gonna have a smoke and then we'll be back and we'll hear Miko's ghost story.
Love you guys. Hi, lovely Krista. <clears throat> Sometimes silence is the key, you know. A bit of quiet time is always good for everyone. Start of a new year, you know. So, it mm, is what it is. Hopefully, this is a better new year for everyone involved. <clears throat> but yeah, my story is definitely nothing like Dan's, that's for sure. I'm pretty sure we all have had some experience sometime, mm. whatever it may be, whether it's um, ghostly, uh, mm, out of this world. And by the way, but d please don't take me to for a uh, conspiracy theorist or someone that thinks that uh, the world is not what it's supposed to be. Don't, don't think that I'm a realist, but there is things you see that you're like, uh, something definitely is going on here that uh, we don't really, really can grasp. But I guess in the day, each to their own. So you take what you want from it and who really cares? So, yeah, it doesn't worry me one bit. Um, but it, that Dan's, Dan's story and everyone's story is interesting and um, you definitely you got to take this shit for granted, like 100%, because people have experienced things. So. And how did this brother me grow up? At the time... Um, Lyndall was working um, at uh, Bado Bay and yep. she was working at a different hair salon, right, with this other um, lady. 
Anyway, um, I'll tell you in a sec. One of, good boy, go, go to the toilet. One of our sons got up to do a wee. I'll tell you in a sec. He's yeah. Yeah, mate. Yeah, go. Ahead. He's doing a big boy, far out. Good boy. Good night, mate. Good boy. Yeah, at the time, um, Linda was working at Bado Bay, right? Mm -hmm. And um, because Linda worked with this lady, she um, was telling her like friend at the time about our, our experiences, what was going on at our house, right? And we did set for that that was pretty full on and hectic, do you know what I mean? Which it was for us. And then how's this brother? And we've got proof on Lyndall's phone and what she told us and what she showed us off her phone and she gave us pictures, right? Oh, me and Lyndall were like, fucking hell. Like, way beyond it made us feel a lot better at one point right we're like fucking fuck what she's gone through is fucking way worse and we're like fuck and how's this even um to this day i'll even show i'll put it on youtube right the pictures right i guarantee and out of any ghost hunter ghost ghost anyone that's tried to take pictures of ghosts You'll see it when you look at it. No bullshit, right? I don't know how the heck she's got these, took these pictures of this ghost at her house at the time. But fuck, man, it wasn't even, it wasn't one ghost. It was a few. And you can see them like clear as day and fucking freaky, brother. You're like, fuck, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I dead set, I guarantee you. Once you guys see it, you go, yeah, fuck. Like, hectic, brother. But anyway, she said, oh, um, this lady said she, um, she can rent a house at the entrance where we've got a business, right? Anyway, she said it was a real old house. Anyway, she said um, when she moved in there, there was a little um, carport. And she said, what was weird, she, when she walked into the carport, there was a, um, a noose. Hey, still a noose coming from the ceiling, right? And then she, she said she didn't think anything of it, Bob, at the time, but she's like, she thought it was a bit weird seeing a noose hanging from the ceiling. Anyway, um, she moved into the house, right? Then um, she said one day her kids called her because they were playing at the back and there was a, a little door out the back of the house that went underneath the house. Anyway, um, the kids ran in and go, Mum, come and have a look at this. So she's like, oh, what? She goes, and she even took pictures and she even sent it to us. And I'm like, yeah, fuck, that's a bit weird. Anyway, um, just underneath the house, um, which was, I don't know if it was nailed to wood or whatever, but there was a bunch of, um, like, you know, sage? Mm -hmm. It was like sage, right? It looked like in the photo, sage with like real old flowers coming out of it, right? Then anyway, connected to that sage with the old flowers, there was real old tiny round um, pictures of people all hanging off this bunch of flowers, right? Anyway, um, one of her kids, because they were young and 
probably don't know, right? She said one of her kids' buddy pulled it off the wall. Anyway, um, she said that the next one, um, her to the um, because I think her daughter was one of the one that pulled it off was thirteen years old, right? Anyway, she had a thirteen year old at the time and an eight year old. The thirteen year old was the one that pulled it off underneath the house and brought it out and showed it and and ended up. Yeah, but her mum's like freaked out, right? You go and put that back. So anyway, I don't know if she put it back or whatnot, right? Anyway, um, the next night her daughters went, um, because she's like a single mother, her two daughters went and stayed at the father's house. So she was at her own house, at that house, staying there by herself that night. Anyway, she said um, she was sleeping in bed and... She felt something pulling the blankets off her off the bed, right? So she woke up, right, and didn't think anything of it and pulled the blanket back off, like pulled the blanket back on her. Then she went sort of back to sleep and then the, the blanket got pulled back off her. So anyway... um. She said she woke up and she just lay there and, she, and then she said she could hear like a weird voice talking, but she didn't know what who was talking or what it was, right? But she could hear some voice talking. So she got up, right, and um, she said she turned on all the lights in the house yelling out, who's in my house? Who's in here? And... Um, she said she didn't see anyone in the whole house, right? Then she said she turned off all the lights in her house and the only light that was left on was the light that was in her bedroom, which she's gone back to. Anyway, she said she walked in her room. Her phone was on the bed at the time. She grabbed her phone and she said, I don't know why. I turned around and I put my camera on and I took a picture at the door that went into the bedroom and then being honest, right, um, the picture she took, it sort of looked like a fucking demon brother standing at the door fucking looking at her, right? And she said she freaked the fuck out, right? So she ended up fucking leaving the house that night and she said she slept in a car. Then anyway, the, the next night, um, no, sorry, the next day she went, and picked up her kids, right? And um, her kids were playing at the backyard and at, um, at the time, because, you know, like day, daylight savings down here gets dark at five, like mm -hmm. when it's not daylight savings. Yeah. She said um, the kids were playing out in the backyard and they're like, we can see a lady um, flying around, mum, mum. So she said she walked out the back because she was cooking dinner at the time, walked out the back, and the steps going down. And then um, she stood there and talked to her kids, and they're like, there's a lady there. Can you see the lady? And she's like, nah. So she goes, I don't know why I did, but I grabbed my phone and I got my camera out again and I took a picture. And then on the picture, right, it sort of looks like um, – a half angel person cross something, I don't know, something weird, which I'll put on the thing and you'll see it. And you can try and guess whatever you think it is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then anyway, yeah. this other picture other than that, which even freaked me out, right? She goes, then the next day after that, the girl that, um, took that thing off the wall, right? She said um, it was dark. She goes, she was looking out the window and her mum goes, what are you looking at? She goes, mum, there's someone in your car. And it was dark, right? And she, the mothers went and looked out the window and went, what are you going on about? There's no one in your car. What are you being stupid? She's, and then she went back to what she's doing and the little girl must have, the one that grabbed it, right? still peeking out the window looking at the car and she's gone, 
Mum, there's someone sitting in the back of your car. So anyway, she walked out with a phone. Like, like she said, she don't know why, but she walked out with a phone and a daughter. Looked in a car, right? Didn't see no one or nothing. Then anyway, um, she walked back onto the porch, and her daughter turned around this time and said, "Mum, take a picture of the car." She's like, "Why?" And the daughter just goes, take a picture of the car now, mum. So she turned around in the dark, which you can see it's pitch black dark. She's took a picture, right, of the car. You can see the car, but how's this? When you zoom in through the front window, I don't know fucking if it's a demon or what the fuck it is, but something, you know, you've got your two, your front seat and your passenger seat. Something's holding on to the both sides fucking looking through and you can see it clear as day when you zoom in it's like fuck looks he even hectic scarier than the fucking demon thing in a room i'm like fuck like hectic brother i'll i'll put it up i'll go through lindell's phone and i'll get it and i'll put it up brother and you look even the car on you zoom in and you'll go yeah, fuck, that's, that's no one. That's, you can't fucking pretend that shit. Guaranteed. No. no. No way. Even all the pictures she's taken, you can't, I don't know. I guarantee you they're the, both, the best ghost pictures anyone's ever taken I've ever seen in my lifetime. I've watched that many shows. I've never seen nothing like it in my life, brother. Ever. Oh. <clears throat> no. Well, fuck once that. You see it, but I guarantee you will be gobsmacked. Same with everyone that's listening now. These will all be dumbfounded. And you know it's not bullshit and that. You see for your own eyes and you go, yeah, fuck. Hey. You can't no, no, I'm not calling you out. No, no way. Can't I know what you... Shit, huh? Dead set, I'm being truthful and honest. Like, you can't even photo crop it nothing you can see it's full legit clear as day i don't know you'd be like fuck most hectic as shit i've ever seen ever mm. yeah true it's insane hectic brother you wait until you see you you'll keep looking and go yeah fucking hell yeah, you have to show me, yeah, sure. Crazy. I definitely will show you as all. And you'll see for your own eyes. Fucking hell. No bullshit, and you can tell it's... Uh, when you see it, you know it's not good. It's not... You know what I mean? It's not on... Obviously, it's on the surf, but it's not... I don't know, it's... You can tell it's not bullshit. You can tell it's no lie. It's not cropped. It's not. It's not nothing. Yeah. And it's scary. It's scary just looking at it, brother. Me personally, myself, I thought me and Linda would had hectic shit, and then we went fuck. And she's like, I feel it. I feel it. That it it's following me around, and we're like, oh fuck. And then we stopped hanging. Linda stopped hanging out with her. She dead set did. Been. Hands down, totally honest. We're like, fuck. Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much, mate. No, like that was years ago, brother. But back then, when we went through that and then we seen that, we're like, oh, fucking hell. Fuck. That's yeah. Hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good, mate. Don't stress. Yeah, no, I'm not stressing, brother. I know you don't stress. It's all good. But I'll show you, you'll be like dumbfounded, brother. You'll be like, yeah, freaking hell. That's hectic. Oh, yeah, I'm fucking oath, yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing? You bloody kicking the bed or you staying up or what are you doing? You working um, tomorrow? What? Yeah, I'm working tomorrow. Good dude. Yeah. Hang on here with your brother. It's two o'clock, but yeah, I might as well finish this beer and then I'll go to bed. Yeah, fair enough. I'll do that with you. Probably 10 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. 
We all got to eat some cooked salmon. That should be cold now. Whew, I'm keen for it. Yeah, cooked salmon's mad, brother. Oh, right. We, we bought salmon for fucking... So normally um, salmon, when you go to the supermarket, is fucking, I don't know, what? Between 33 and 36 bucks a kilo? Yeah, GRA. We got it for $6 a kilo. That's mad. So we bought three massive fillets first, which was fucking six bucks. And we're like, no, this is a steal. So then we went and bought another six dollars worth. <laughs> oh, massive fillets of fucking salmon for fucking 15 bucks. Normally it costs you fucking, it'd normally it'd be 70 bucks. Oh, tricky, briggy. Yeah, that's tricky, crazy. brother. Oh, tricky on a fucking tricky course tonight or what? Sorry about um, talking about ghosts if no one wanted to hear it. I'm sorry. Who cares? Mate, I'm only being, only being what, honest, but. In the day, we can talk about fucking our own children or we can talk about ghosts. Yeah. We made a choice. We talk, We spoke about ghosts, not our own family. What What was your um, experience, brother? Oh. Uh, doesn't matter if it doesn't go near. Oh, no. So basically, long story short, me, my sister, grandma, went to her one of her friend's places in Hallett, South Australia. If you want to Google it, if you want to know where I live, anyone who cares, or want to know where I live for, for whatever fucking reason. Anyway, so this old lady uh, lived at a house. She had a fairy floss machine. She was a good friend of my grandma's. Um, her granddaughter was staying there. So me and my sister, and we went there, you know, for her and her grandma to catch up. And uh, the granddaughter was there, which was the same age as us, or th the three of us were the same age. Anyway, so they were out there making fucking fur, like the grandparents talking shit, making fur floss. The house was haunted, apparently. So we've gone in, the three of us are playing Monopoly. So we started playing the game of Monopoly. Play the game. You know, we got halfway through. Oh, the fairy floss was ready, so we all marched out. Oh, yeah, three of ran out to get the fairy floss. So we eat the fucking fairy floss. All good. Come back in to the bedroom and the fucking Monopoly table, everything was just fucking blown across the room. There was nothing left. So the Monopoly table, everything was just fucking just scattered, blown everywhere. So... Well, like, what? we walked back in the room and we're like, what? But there was nothing left. Just all being blown across the room. And there was, it, there was, it was, it was that hot in summer. There was no windows open. It was a hot summer's day. It was, no. So something has just, I, I don't know. Something's done something because you can't just lift up a table, the whole Monopoly table, and move and throw it all over. So that's no. what happened that day. So I don't care. I don't know what happened, but something happened that day, and it wasn't it wasn't me. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. It wasn't anyone. Yeah. It was something else in that house that did that. I reckon it definitely was, brother. Well, grandma, the old, old grandma love friend said this place has problems. She's like, I'm not going to tell you what the problem is, but the price, this place has some issues. She didn't describe what the issues were, but she just said, look, this, this place has some issues. And that Probably was she didn't want to freak you there. Well, I don't know. So something's happened there somewhere on the line, and that was it, Dan. I, look, mate, I, whether, whether fucking, I don't know. There was no animals. I, 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 look, I'm a logical guy. I work as a plumber. As, I'm a tradie, mate. I work, at, I work logistically, and I work, look, that's what I do. So... Mm. If there's something that I can't explain, then I just go, well, like, I can't explain it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to make up a fucking story. Well, this is how you put shit in the ground. This is how you put shit in houses. If yeah. I can't describe how it's done, I don't know. I cannot describe what happened that day. And, you know, people might say, oh, you got a lot of bullshit on Well, man, I'm sorry. That's what happened to me that day. And I fucking don't know what to do about it. Apart from say, talk to you about it. You told me your story. I'm telling you mine. Simple as that. Yeah. 
something definitely pushed it over and threw it across the room. I know definitely. it did. I know, I know exactly what's going on. Someone I know, a young child, did not want us in that bedroom because yeah, there was a deceased child that was killed in there fucking 20 years ago. She did not want us in her bedroom. That's exactly what happened there. Yeah, she was killed by her father. She was killed by her father, and I found this out years later. Uh, there was a murder in the house 20 years earlier, and she was killed by her father in her bedroom, and that's probably why she didn't want us in there playing a game. Yeah, I'd I believe it, eh? For each sure. own, each their own. Like, I don't care. Look, call me if I, whatever. I don't give a fuck, mate. I can tell you. Why would I even bother telling you this shit? I don't care. Like, means nothing to me. Just, I'm just telling you what I saw. And, <laughs> I know, but uh, I, I don't have a YouTube channel. I couldn't give a fuck about YouTube. I was just, just telling you what happened that day. That was it. So. I believe you. I definitely be, believe you. Right, could have been I a flying mean, saucer. Who gives a fuck? And I do believe in ghosts because I've seen shit and experienced shit and I've got pictures to prove stuff and videos to prove shit from my own self. Yeah, I can't prove that, mate, because there was no phones and we were only fucking, yeah, I would have been. But I ten. do believe that something's happened for sure, definitely. But I can guarantee you. As a 10-year-old, ask Tricky, ask Jess, yourself. How many things do you remember as a 10-year-old? I don't remember no, much. Not much, old. no. One of the, that's one of the things that stuck out my mind about what happened that day. Um, otherwise, I really couldn't give a fuck about what happened when I was 10. Yeah, uh, I'd be the same. You know, you're just doing your thing, but things yeah. stand out. So, I could be wrong. Look, whatever. Long story short, something happened. Could have been the dog. They had no dogs. It could have been something. Mm, could have been the cockroach. A fucking 15-pound cockroach that walked through the door and kicked everything over. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, well, I remember um, when I was younger, I went to my new pop's house, and um, they had an in-ground swimming pool. And I said, can I go swimming in your pool? And they're like, no, um, you're going to get bitten by the wasps. So I'm like, I didn't know what that meant back when I was younger. I'm like, no, nah, Nan and Pop, I'll be all good. Anyway, I remember as soon as I opened the door, I don't know what type of wasps they were, they were at the time, but I remember getting bitten by about six or seven wasps on my legs, my arms, and I, I was running like crying. Beside the pool, <laughs> I just remember um, because they would chase me. I remember jumping in the pool, and that was the only thing that sort of saved me for a split second, right? But then, as soon as I um come up from under the water, they started um stinging me in the head. Oof, yeah, that's rough. And then I swam to the corner of me um Ned and Pop's pool. I jumped out. Started running because I had to go back through the fence where, where I come in and I got stung a few more times on the back. And then after that, um, I'd never wanted to swim in my nan and pop's pool ever again. Yeah, they're, they're rugged, eh? Yeah. But, uh, have you guys ever had a revenge story, you know, which, um, you know, it's not you know, something to be proud of, but a, a revenge story on your on your mum's, um, you know, your mum's partner or your mum's ex partner. So you know, like obviously, mum and dad break up. Ah, fuck it. And you, the dad comes in, the ex dad, the other dad comes in. So I'll tell you a story. So anyway, we, we had a long relationship. This dude, tough as nails. Um, mum's new bloke. And uh, anyway, I decided one day, you know, apprentice plumber, you know, breaking the new, you know, breaking free and doing a new thing in life. You know, um, come out straight out of school, straight into plumbing and 
anyway, so he, you know, he could teach me a few new things, and I'm like, eh. which he knew about everything anyway. Long story short, sitting there one day, and I'm not sure if you've seen PVC glue, you know, you glue down pipes, mm-hmm. you glue PVC fittings. He, he, you know, he loved, he, he had, had to wear glasses. Anyway, so we're gluing this PVC fitting, and I've, I'm gluing the thing, and I flicked the fucking PVC brush, smacked him straight in the fucking eyeball. So the PVC mm-hmm. glue is going, yeah. For like a man that's like seven foot tall, 200 kilos, unlike me, they can't fucking just jump in there, scream and cry like a fucking baby. And I just sat there and was like, thank you, Lord. It was <laughs> the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I do it again every day. It was just, whoop, and it's like, Oof. And, and mate, you should send it like the man that pretend to be the biggest, toughest man you've ever seen. Mate, I've had this shit my life 15 times. I get it in there all the time. Work, fucking splash your nights, wipe the shit out. It's like glue, just fucking pick it off your eyeball. Hit him in the eye, and he's like, oh my god. And you got no idea. It was like, it was like um, one of the Kardashians putting her makeup on wrong. It was that bad. <laughs> And I just sat there, and, I, and that was the day of the age. You couldn't film people because I didn't have a camera. And I, I just looked at him, and I'm like, you are the most pathetic fucking piece of shit I've ever met in my life. It was good. When, um, when I was about 19 or 20 years old, brother, I was, like, not as tall as I am now. I was, like, more shorter and skinnier. I've um, decided to walk down to um, the pub, right, brother, and have a couple of beers. And I think I um, was even going to go and have a slap on the pokies at the time. Anyway, I'm walking down to the pub, right? I'll get to the pub, but before um, I walk into the main doors, right, how's this? I see this big punch on going on, right? This fucking huge man. He's fucking knocking out every bastard in because it like there was a big circle of people watching this bloke well, like watching the fight right but when i got there it looked like to me that this, this big man was fucking knocking every cunt out and everyone was laid out in the middle of the circle right and i i wasn't to do with i went I just rocked up there, right, just walking to the pub to have a couple of beers. Had nothing to do with me, but how's this? I look for about a man. I'm seeing this fucking huge cunt, right, knocking out people. I don't know why, right? I'm standing there. How's this? This big cunt must have thought I was with them people, which I wasn't. I only just, well, I walked to the pub by myself. How's this, brother? This fucking big cunt has grabbed me by the throat, right? He's fucking picked me up. My feet went off the ground fucking probably about four foot high, right? I didn't know what the fuck was going on, right? Anyway, this big cunt's fucking slammed me against the brick wall, right? Yeah, he, no, he, sorry. He picked me up with his left, left hand. He's grabbed me by my throat with his left hand. He's fucking picked me up off the ground. My feet were heaped high off the ground, brother. He slammed me against the wall with his left hand. And this cunt was about to fucking knock me out with his right hand, brother. He, he, I don't know what was going on. Do you know what I mean? I just rocked up, just started watching the fight. This cunt fucking just aimed at me. And I was probably the smallest person standing yeah, that, that'd be me too, yeah. yeah. Everyone that was watching this big cunt grabbed me like a fucking big gorilla, boom, grabbed me with his fucking left hand, picked me up, threw me against the wall. He went to fucking knock me out, the big cunt, to hit me as hard as he can. I don't know why I did it, but I was fucking lucky, brother. How's this at the time? As soon as he went to fucking like, punch me dead set to knock me out in the face, I don't know why I did it, but at the time, I went like this, and I fucking put my head to the side. The big cunt fucking hit the brick wall, right, and broke his fist. 
He's dropped me right and let me go. He's bent down going, ah, and holding his fucking hand, right? And then when he had his hand down, I thought at the split second, well, I probably didn't think it, but anyway, I fucking dead set booted the big cunt right in the fucking head. Right? <laughs> and, and, and sent him on his back, right? Oh. And, um, anyway, I fucking jumped on this big cunt, right? I was fucking tiny and started fucking bashing into his fucking head. And then every everyone that was standing around the circle was like, yeah, woo! And then I walked off and the big cunt was like holding his fucking fist like fucking squealing. Because he just fucked his whole hand. Oof. Yeah. But how it went down and oh, it was, I didn't go there to fight anyone or do anything. Do you know what I mean? It was crazy. I don't know why the big bloke just tried to attack me for no reason. No, 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 no. It's, it's not about you, Dan. They do it to all of us. Same shit happens was, to me, man. It was crazy, brother. And I just moved my head right at the right time. And the well, I mean, yeah, so they're, too, they're too scared to take Jess on, but yeah. <laughs> that was crazy, brother. Hit the brick wall when I moved my head. Do you know what I mean? I fucking broke all his fists. Yeah, that's gold, mate. Because I remember, so that. Um, but being so honest, the, if I didn't do that, brother, he would have fucking. Oh yeah, that would have fucking. He would have. He would have. You would have been in the hospital, gun. He would have. He would have knocked yeah. me out and crushed, crushed yeah, me. Yeah, and me. that's. That's bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to get into political. That's just fucking rough. Yeah. And you had nothing to do it. So, yeah. I remember like a um, back. In, do you remember? Um, do you ever have the BLF back in the day? Like the Builders Labourers Federation, Daniel Way, like union, like a union, like yeah. Well, anyway, so I used to have a big BLF Builders Union, uh, Builders fucking Liberation thing here in Townsville. So. My mum's partner was the same kind I was talking about. My uncle, anyway. Anyway, long story short. Um, they'd gone to the Sea View in Townsville here after a, one of those events and same shit. One of the blokes has come out and they, and old mum's partner had all these rings, like all these fucking flash rings, which were nothing. Well, probably were, were something, but anyway. So he used to walk around like, you know, I'm going to punch someone and, and wreck their face with his rings on. Anyway, so this cunt's come out of the toilet. And he's going, oh, and old mate was full of piss, the cunt. He's like, let's go. So I mate just fucking railed him. Good night. That was the end of him. Fucking, burp, there goes his rings on the ground. Like, you know, you're a hero. You know, walking around with your fucking $10,000 gold rings, you, you clown. You're asleep <laughs> on the ground. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, that proves a point that you just got to be careful who you're fucking with. It doesn't matter what, how big you are, how tall you are. Just be careful. Because I've seen blokes that are fucking 400 and... I've seen blokes that are fucking 200 kilos that get knocked out by someone that's 70. Yeah. It doesn't... The bigger you are, the harder you are. Dave, brother, like, oh, was that lucky, do you know what I mean? And... I turned, I turned my head at the right time and he hit the brick wall and set in my head. True. That's right, <laughs> exactly. So that was about being fucking smart with movement. Yeah. And Terp, Terpy is probably the classic example to explain that. So Terpy would, yep. so boom, move. So Terp, he, he'd know all about, I'm guessing, what, with what he does is about evading and whatever you got to do. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, mate, you know, I know as well as you. Fuck, mate, if I come up against someone that big and picks you up off the ground, oof, you know you're going to get your fucking head kicked in. Yeah, he picked me up like Unless I was... Unless you can feel what you did, yeah. The featherweight. Well, mm. he me up. Mate, I'm exactly the same weight as you. I'm exactly the same size, height, weight. So we're exactly the same. But now, um, now I'm a lot he heavier now compared to when I was back when I was 20. Yeah, well, I am too, but it doesn't matter. We're still short of us, can't yeah. they want to pick it up? They can. So, yeah. but now I Guess. think I'm a 70 or 74 or something. Yeah, I'm the same. So, the fact of the matter is, if you just don't, you just don't get yourself in that situation if you can help yeah. it. I guess. Yeah, I weigh, I, I weigh 79 kilos. 
and I'm same height as you. Yeah, we're probably near the same, brother. Yeah, we would be. Well, I'm. Yeah, I'd be exactly the same height as you. Because apparently you're my brother, so I've been told. You are. Well, someone said I actually am from a lost family. You definitely are. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, even today, like, oh, me and Jess at the shops. Was that today? And this fucking can't. Remember that dude? I've seen him a few times. There's this dude that crews around the shops. No shit. How tall would he be? Jess. Oof. The cunt. Like, he wouldn't even be able to walk. The bloke would be have to be eight feet tall. No, he's not. He's like seven foot, maybe. Seven foot. I don't know. But he's well, like. Maybe close to it. Like, my God. Be... The dude just rolls around the shops like he's a fucking massive gun. Like, not fit, like, but just tall. Like, just this big fucking you name. Like, how would you even lay in bed at night, can't you? Your feet would be hanging out at the bottom of the bed sheet. You wouldn't be able to fit in your bed. Yeah. That's like, why how I would you go to sleep at night? My older sister's son, he's um, he's 17 and he's six foot nine. Jesus. At yeah, 17. Six foot one. Nah, well, that guy would be the same height as that, mate. Yeah, same height. So, you know, it makes you and I wonder. You and I go to bed at night and we go, ah, oh, well, at least we can keep our feet in the bottom of the sheets. Yeah, keep them warm. Imagine them poor cunts. Yeah, my sister that. had to um, build a custom bed for her son. Yeah, the fucking feet hang out at the bottom. Yeah. Cold feet or not, the poor cunts. He, he's a good kid and he's he's like a gentle giant. Do you know what I mean? Oh, the, oh damn, My this guy, funny. he definitely comes across as that way too. No, he definitely. I stand next to him and I give him a cuddle, right? And my head comes, the top of my head comes up to um where where his boobs are. Oh, yeah, yeah. This guy would be the same. <laughs> same shit. I'd, I'd hug him. My head would be at his, not even at his shoulders. I'd be, like, touching with his shoulders. So he'd be yeah, doing these ones over my head. And it's funny, Mick, brother. Um, Linda was like, geez, you look a lot like Mick. I don't know, Lyndall said it. She's like, you and me sort of look um, like each other. Well, I can't make that judgment. I don't know, that's what Lyndall says. So. Well, I have heard, I've heard that, yeah. I guess you have to ask chat. Do I look like Dan? Do we look similar? Is anyone even there or they're all gone? There's a lot of people, but maybe they all fall asleep with the wrong gun. They're all uh, probably, probably just laying in bed watching, chilling out. Well, maybe they go on to JD's. JD's cool. He's a good yeah, JD's guy. a good lad. Hmm. Might grab yeah. another beer, brother, and then I'll go to bed. Can't you serious? Yeah, why not? Mm, I'll have one more, that's it. Love you, brother. Love you. I love you too. Is that all right? Yeah, mate. Sort of feels a bit weird saying that, but anyway. I love you too. She's good. I've got my ears, mate. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're stupid, idiot. It's great, man. It's great. Cheese, everyone. You're going to walk. Oh. Oof. 
Sakin. Ya baba. What's the plan? <clears throat> what are you doing tomorrow night, brother? Fuck all. Oh, I should. Nah, nothing, mate. I, I'll get serious on Saturday night to get ready for back to work, but uh, tomorrow night, nothing. Oh, my guns. Nothing planned. Might, might go live. If, yeah. What, yeah. What if I'm, yeah, we'll do me, Lyndall, you, and Jeff. That'll be cool. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Ah. Oh, so you're going to kick it now? Um, after me beer. All right, well, hang on a second. Do you want to have a smoke? Because I'm going to have a smoke. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that too, but because you come back, I'm like... I didn't well, can't no one's here anymore. It doesn't matter. Good thinking, What's brother. There? Leave as this. We'll go for a smoke and I'll be back in a sec. Right, okay. Back in five. Love you, bud. <laughs> I'll be back in 20 seconds. Five minutes. Can't, I'll just punch one down at that point. <laughs> punch it down, cut. Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh.
Side Dan. You there, brother? Doing for a diary. Cool. Yeah, I'm just saying. Anyway. I guess CJ's gone. Turkey's gone. Everyone's booted. So. Yeah. All good. Dan, come back, please. What's that good night? Hi, right, bro. Mm -hmm. Everyone's booted it. So, do you um do you all just have um Osco? Uh, no. You don't. No. You have the Osco brother. Yeah, I don't have it, mate. It's easy to get. Yeah, well, probably, but not here. Because if you got Osco brother, all I'll do is punch in your mobile number. Oh, Jess's mobile number, and I can send you some cash. Well, how about you don't send me any money? Well, just get Oscar, and I'll just punch in your mobile number, and I'll send you some cash without you, you um, without you giving any details or anything. You so, Dan, if I give him my Oscar number, are you going to buy me a Ferrari? Well, if you give yeah, I want a Ferrari. Yeah. I'll give you some cash, brother. Can't I don't want money. It's all good. You don't get it. I don't come in here for money. I come in here for fun. I've been doing this for oh, a long time. Wait, love is but Yeah, it's great. I, I feel the same way, but I don't come in here for money, my friend. Same with us, brother. We don't come in for money. Come so, in for good times, but that's yeah, just an I'm offer. Not. That's just an offer from me and Lindell, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't accept I don't accept offers, mate. Well, if you um, said you had Osco, doesn't matter if you accept it or not, I just would have punched in your mobile number. And Well, you know what? It would go straight to your bank, brother. It would. Mm, but luckily, I don't. Well, you need to get it. Or you'll keep it for your kids, my friend. Yeah, kids are good, brother. They, they get what they want when they want. They're all good, mate. That's good, mate. And I, I've told you that multiple times. So, mate, it's good. I'm happy. It's not hard to get Osco, brother. It's, it's not, not hard. It's not hard to say thank you either. And I appreciate you can, it. You can, say, you can say thank you why. when we Osco you some money. Hmm. All good. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, well, you gonna hit the sack? I'll finish his beer and then I'm gonna hit the sack. So you're working tomorrow? Yeah. Jesus, God. <laughs> We're Rosie's brother. We just go out or go on. True. That's my favorite saying, actually. That's my favorite saying too. Definitely, angry. brother. Go on, or go on. Well spoken. And we do it in style, mate. True, we do. Apparently, the brothers with no mothers. Definitely, and as long as um you have a feed, do you know what I mean? Oh my, look at. I'll get some salmon. Do you know what I mean? You wake up and you're all good. Oh, yeah. I've got some that's fucking... The, that's the key to drinking. As long as you had some sort of feed, you're all good. Yeah. Yes, very true. Having said that, I probably should go and get some salmon. <laughs> Beer, stop rushing Hi, Bill. Bill the legend. Bill's the white. Cheers, Bill. How are you, mate? 
And it's 2.35 in the morning. And it'll be 3.35 where you are, Mick. Nope. Uh, it's 1.35 here. 1.35? Yeah. Oh. I'll finish my beer and then I'll go to bed. Well, you can do whatever you want. But it's cool talking to you and lovely Jess. Oh, yeah, and I'm all, sad. And all the people in the chat. Awesome. I'm keen to eat some fucking salmon right now. Salmon's mad, brother. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oof. Yeah, it's good. I like, um, you know, Snapper. Yeah. I love Snapper, eh? Yeah, but the problem is you understand the ban they had in South Australia with Snapper. Like, you can't buy it there. Yeah. So the problem is, I don't know if you guys can get it where you are, but... Yeah, we, we can buy it um, at Coles Supermarket. Mm, you are. Okay. But that's probably farmed. Probably. And also you can um, buy a lot bigger ones from um, like people off the trawlers here and what like, um, like the uh, fishery people, like the co-ops and that. Yeah. Where like they're, I don't know if they're like a day old or. Well, yeah, it wouldn't matter. Right? Yeah, we good. We eat a lot of snapper But they do, yeah, sell them fresh, but down here in New South Wales. Yes. There's one, one thing that I'd love to buy, but we don't get it in, in Australia, brother, is, um, you know, king crab? Mm. Oh, king crab is the shit. Yeah, I'd love to um try king crab. It'd be mad. I'm pretty yeah. sure it comes from Canada and out that way. Yeah, it comes from the deep, deep yeah. ocean. Because we, in Australia, we just get um, the blue swimmer crab and the mud crab. We don't get, um, what, the king crab in Australia? Yeah, because yeah. it's cold water. So, Dan, like I was trying to explain to Jess the other day. So, in France, there's a massive infest infestation of fucking uh, the blue crab that's trying to fucking eat all their mussels. And they're like they're, they're they're throwing away tons and tons of these fucking blue swimmer crabs in the bin. Oh well, mate, they're worth a lot of money. Yeah, in, yeah, in Australia, but they're, they're throwing them in the bin. That's crazy. And it, the blue swimmer crab tastes beautiful, but the only bad thing about it is you don't get much uh, meat off them. It's not much meat, no. No, and apparently, um, the king crab. Tastes like the um, I mean the blue swimmer crab, tastes like the king crab, but they're a lot bigger. Yeah, so the blue swimmer crab is plentiful. The king crab is not. So. Mm. Well, you can get them a lot, yeah. Well, you don't here. Have you ever tried a king crab before? Me no. I don't, I don't do seafood, brother. Well, you don't. Mm. I just eat food here in this house. No. Nah. I'll just, I'll might, eat, I might eat a prawn here or there. I'm, I'm not one that will sit there and eat 10 kilos of prawns, no. I might mean. have one here or there. I don't, yeah, it's not my thing. I'd rather me, me and Linda will eat a, um, a kilo of prawns each, and I might have um, some oysters. I'll have like well, you get along with you, Sam, because Jess loves oysters. I love seafood. Yeah, what are you talking about? I love oysters. We've um, tried or well, we've had um, lobster, but I don't know. I think the blue swimmer crab tastes heaps better than a lobster. Yeah, 
Oh, no, the lobster I had was amazing. Like a lobster from Australia, I, I don't know, I think a blue smoke crab is better than a lobster. Mm, well, I wouldn't know. I'm not going to answer that one, but I wouldn't know. Well, go buy me a blue smoke crab. I can pair it. Mm. I haven't had one yet. Yeah, Bill said king crab is hard to catch. The bearing straight is no picnic rough seas there. Huh. I'd love to try one. No, so, so it's, it's talking about the Bering Sea. So the Bering yeah. Sea is like the fucking most rugged ocean on and, the planet. Yeah, and so freezing cold. When it you go shit on the Bering Sea, it's rough. So, ever, yeah, no, nah, it's rugged. Um, and it'd be fairly cold there, eh? Oh, it'd be fucking, yeah, like, people die, yeah, it'd be freezing. Yeah. Mate, it's in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. That's why they, well, I'd like to think why it, it, it costs so much money to buy these things, because yeah. they're coming from people that have to Basically, risk their lives to get these fucking things. Yeah, that's crazy. Blue swimmer crabs in South Australia, mate. We used to fucking just net them off the jetty. Yeah. They used to swim in your net, just pull yeah. in the net. Or you could be fishing and pull in a blue swimmer. Yeah, yeah 100%. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, um, you know, you say, yeah, um, Jess is like clicking on to the way you say yeah. So she's sort of she sort of says yeah the way you say it. <laughs> Which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, not really, unless she learns how to say it. Wow. Well, I keep insulting me? Well, I think retard. She can say it, say it a lot better now than a year ago. Mm. All right, again. Go ahead. Go ahead. Insult me some more. Now you can look clear. Is that a footy shirt you got on there, brother? Me? Yeah. Yeah. No. What? Okay, what What's on the um, emblem? North Queensland football team. Yeah, man. So, by the way, um, so Bill's right. He said, with telling you about how the king crabs are, like you, they're not cheap, and they're hard to find. That's why they're worth so much money. Yeah, he said it used to get king crab on sale for pretty much ten dollars per pound. Is that pound or kilo? Pound. LB. Pound. Now, if you can find it on sale, it's twenty dollars per pound. But yeah. Yeah. So they're like tuna. Because bluefin, whatever, they're becoming so rare. Half the fucking king crab you're eating is probably just some bullshit mixed together crab that you've never had. Like it's not real. So that's why I don't believe the stories. That yeah, probably because yeah. I've only watched um people eating king crab on YouTube, and I'm like, oh, that. And the way they talk about what it tastes like and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, if that tastes like the blue, because people have said it tastes like the blue swimmer crab of Australia, but it's no. large, and I'm like, wow, I'd love that then. No. That would be awesome. So, if Dan, if I was to say to you that... Um, if you want to talk about relative species, 
So would you say to me that a dolphin tastes like a uh, a shark? No. Okay. So there we go. Hmm. Well, it's different species, but one's a mammal, one's not. But still, at the end of the day, they both attributed. They're both considered. Mm, you know, oh, I'm pretty sure they'd be. So I don't do any of them. But like eating a whale, eating a fucking, like eating a whale, eating a bloody bat, a bear cub. Who cares, mate? Like we don't eat shit. We just eat the. Probably we should just be eating. Um, normal things like capsicum. Hair or lamb or or sheep. Mm. Or, or yeah. Pork. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Anyway. Lovely, lovely Jess said it's amazing, Dan. It's um one of my all time favorite back in Canada. Very expensive but worth it. For those like us that like it. Yeah, yeah. because when you buy it from Canada, it came from a thousand miles away to get it. Yeah. Exactly. It came from Alaska, which is nowhere near where they lived. Not 300,000 miles. What the hell are you talking about? Pretty much the same distance. Uh, you better look at that. So they have no idea on. Look, I've tried to um, Google it and try and find it in Australia, but I can't find it at all, brother. Sorry? Yeah, Sorry, mate. Look, I, I don't think we can um, get king crab in Australia at all. No. Oh, maybe if you find a high, high in a restaurant, yeah. Well, if I can find one of them, brother, I'll have to um, bring – oh, you don't eat king crab, but – uh, I have no way. No. Anyway, it's all good. Yeah, your next holidays you have off, brother, you should come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Come down, yeah. have a free holiday, mate. It would be awesome. You can stay here with us as long as you want, mate. You and yeah. your kids. Yeah, mate. Even, yeah, if, yeah. even if you got all your kids, brother, you can bring them all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome, brother. All right. Well, what are you doing? You about to pin it? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably stay on for another 10 minutes or so. Yeah. Oof. I'll give it to um three o'clock, brother. Okay. It's, um, it's two forty eighty. Yeah. Yeah. So I might as well just leave it. It's I'll leave. I'll go at three. Okay. Fair Mark, enough. It's only like 12 minutes. Yeah. Make it as a round number. Why not? And it's, it'll be 2 o'clock where you are. Correct, yeah. So then yep. that'll mean you'll get one hour more sleep than me. True, and I, <laughs> I don't have work, which is even better. <laughs> Although I am, oh. Lyndall loves Jess so much, eh? And she loves you too. Oh, mate, well, yeah, whatever. I don't, yeah. She's Is all about a density, and she talks, she. Well, because she's focused, focused at work all day, do you know what I mean? And once we deal with the kids, she's like, 
wonder if my besties text me or do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love her too, Dan. And then oh whatever I'm doing, I'm like, hey babe, what are you doing? She's like, I'm talking to my bestie. <laughs> Gee, sweet. How's Mick doing? Yeah. So you, you can text me anytime you like, brother. You yeah, yeah. Yeah, all good. <laughs> we'll have a bestie um conversation too. Yeah. Oh, I'm like an idea. I'm good. <laughs> Just as like kick you up the bum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start no, getting I'm, into um I'm, I'll start yeah. getting into cricket more, brother. No, no, you don't know. That's all good. Tomorrow I can't wait tomorrow. Fuck me, can I'm, I'm not moving from the lounge. Yeah, we'll sit in the lounge. Definitely go live again. Definitely. Yeah, I'll fucking talk to you in the lounge all night, can't say so get off the TV. I'm trying to watch a fucking cricket. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. What are you doing? Nearly finished, my brother. Nine right. minutes nine minutes and I'm gonna get off. Definitely. Fair enough. So I'm the type of person, I don't know, I don't like leaving, I don't know, like, it's good for the, like, hour, do you know what I mean? Like, if it was two hours, I don't know, I think, you know, the hours are better, I think. Where, like, just, yeah, say, I, if I, I, like, just say, like, just say if you're alive, Mick, and you're like, You've been live for two hours and 55 minutes or something. You're like, all right, well, I might as well just jump off at three hours. Like, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Where you think, oh, it's probably silly just might as well just leave at a round number. Do you know what I mean? Makes sense. Mm. But I'm not looking at the, like, the, how long I've been live? I'm just looking at um the actual time, brother. Like two fifty two here at the moment. So I might as well just go to bed at three o'clock, jump off. Happy days. And then I love you all, and I'll see you all tomorrow with lovely Jess and Mick. Mm. Yep. Outlaw said, um, you can also also thank the Chinese for ruining ruining a lot of our fishing stock. They all take, 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 and not leave for for others. And it's funny you said that, um, outlaw, because. Because it's holiday season in Australia at the moment, probably same where you are. Every, every time, like me and Lynn will drive to work, we, there's this big bridge that goes over towards, like, to the entrance where we aren't where our business is, and there's like a lake each side of the bridge, and then it runs out to like into the beach. And the last week, we, we've only like noticed, like prior, when it's not holiday season, you really don't see it, but you might see a couple of boats, but all the tourists have come up from Sydney and, I don't know, around Australia, they've come there to stay, and there's that many people in their boats, do you know what I mean? Like, hectic, and I said to Lyndall, all the tourists are up um, taking our fish. And they're funny, like, they'll take undersized fish and crazy. Yeah, there's so many tourists up near where we work, Mick, brother. Oh, there's yeah. Heaps of tourists where you are, 
Yeah. Of them, brother. Oh, it's ridiculous. And people like leaving on Facebook, like, yeah, heaps of different things about the tourist and, um, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. No, I'm saying. No, it's fucking rugged, eh? All right, bro. Well, I'm going to have to go and have some fucking salmon. All right, mate. Get a feed into you, buddy. Awesome seeing you, Mick. And I'll definitely tomorrow. go along tomorrow, brother. Right, mate. Right. Cheers, that. Bye, Dan. See you, lovely Jeff. Catch you, mate. See you, brother. Love you, mate. Take care, eh? Take care, buddy. I wouldn't even know what I'm doing here, brother. So I wouldn't even have to turn off. You're all right, mate. I'll let Jess do that. You're at her job. <laughs> all right. Bye, Dan. Talk to you tomorrow. See you, lovely Jess. Bye. Take care. Linda will be happy to see you tomorrow, lovely. I'll be happy to see her and you guys always. Take care. Lovely, I'll see her eyes light up every time she sees you, long, sparkling crazy. She loves you hectic. <laughs> See you, lovely. Sorry if I look a bit rugged, guys. It's early morning in Australia. It's three o'clock in the morning. Hanging out with you lovely people. You're right, lovely Jess. It was awesome um, seeing you and me. Beautiful, Aussie, genuine people. And hanging out with all the beautiful people in the chat around the world. Take care, lovely Jess. We'll definitely see you tomorrow. For sure. I'll stay on for another five minutes and then I'll have to love yous and leave yous because I'll get, I'll probably get like four hours sleep and then I'll have to soldier on for the day and then we'll go live tomorrow night. But she's all good. You only live once, so you might as well make the most of it. And totally being honest to everyone, my main goal, why I um, started YouTube, wasn't wasn't for me, being honest. My main goal for me starting YouTube the whole time being truthful and honest to everyone why I started YouTube was obviously to meet nice beautiful people but if someone asked me why I did start YouTube my why I did start YouTube is for memories like Everything I go on YouTube and this and that, I'll always save it on my channel forever for lifetime. And my reasoning for going on YouTube and starting the channel and doing all what I do is pretty much for me kids. So when I go grow older and I'm not here anymore, do you know what I mean? No one lives forever, but yeah. When I'm not here anymore and my kids get older, 
they'll be able to still see their dad, do you know what I mean? And look back and, yeah, pretty much see their dad for years and years or whatever that I've done on YouTube. That's, yeah, pretty much why I started YouTube. Because even though we're talking adult stuff and that, but by them t by that time, they're going to be adults themselves, do you know what I mean? So it'll be stuff they can watch and at least they can watch back and look at their dad hanging out with all you genuine, beautiful people. That's why I started YouTube. For um, memory from me kids, pretty much. Forever to forever to come. Should I have one more beer and stay on or should I go to bed? It's up to you guys. One in the chat for one more beer. Or two in the chat if I should end the live stream. It's up to you guys. One in the chat, one more beer. Two and I'll end it. It's up to you. Come on, guys, there's 10 beautiful people up here watching. One or two. One or two. One or two. What, what do you want me to do? It's up to you. One more beer or, or two when I go to bed. And if no one says anything, that means, Dan, you should go to bed. I'll give it two more minutes. No one comments. Dan's going to bed. And then I'll go live tomorrow, guys, and... I'll see all you beautiful people tomorrow. Lovely, Jess said, you, sh you should probably go to bed, mate, so you can get some sleep. Thanks, Lovely. And me and Lyndall will definitely go live tomorrow night. Me, you, Jess, and Mick, and Lyndall. It'll be cool. It'll be awesome.
Well, it's um, five past three in the morning here. Thanks heaps, everyone that's um, still watching. I appreciate it. And I, yeah, love you heaps. Keep your eye out for tomorrow. Me, Jess, Mick and Lyndall are going to go live. It's going to be a good night. If you feel like coming by, come and say hi. Take care, everyone. I'm going to go to bed. We'll definitely see you all tomorrow. Love you. Going to end it, guys. Hi, Richard. Thanks for popping in, mate. Richard said, get some sleep, cheers, and big ups. Thanks, mate. Me, Jess, Lindell, and Mika are um, going to go live tomorrow night, definitely. Thanks, heaps, mate. Hope you have a great day. And any luck, um, We'll see all you beautiful people tomorrow. If I didn't have to um, work tomorrow, I'd just stay on here longer and longer. But, yeah, I've got to work tomorrow, so Dan's got to go to bed. I wish I could... Keep talking to you lovely people, but in like three hours, it's going to be sun or daylight here in Australia. So I'm better off trying to get a bit of sleep before I've got to get up. But either way, we'll catch you all tomorrow. Take care and I love you all.